highwaycodeuk.co.uk updated September 17, 2023. Contents Introduction 3 Rules for Pedestrians, 1-35, to 35, 5 Rules for Users of Powered Wheelchairs and Mobility Scooters, 36-46, to 46, 19 Rules about animals, 47 to 58, 23. Rules for cyclists, 59 to 82, 28. Rules for motorcyclists, 83 to 88, 38. Rules for drivers and motorcyclists, 89 to 102, 44. General rules, techniques, and advice for all drivers and riders, 103 to 158, 59. Using the road, 159 to 203, 84. Road users requiring extra care, 204 to 225, 110. Driving in adverse weather conditions, 226 to 237, 119. Waiting and parking, 238 to 252, 125. Motorways, 253 to 273, 132. Breakdowns and incidents, 274 to 287, 140. Road works, level crossings, and tramways, 288 to 307, 147. Direction signs on roads and motorways, 155. Information signs, 155. Light signals controlling traffic 155. Road markings 155. Road signs giving orders 156. Road work signs 156. Signals by authorized persons 156. Signals to other road users 156. Traffic signs 157. Know your traffic signs, 157. Vehicle markings, 157. Warning signs on the road, 157. Annexes, 158. Rules for cyclists, 158. Rules for motorcyclists, 160. Rules for drivers and motorcyclists, 163. Using the road, 168. Penalties 171. Vehicle maintenance, safety, and security 178. First aid on the road 183. Safety code for new drivers 186. Introduction. Who the highway code is for, how it's worded, the consequences of not following the rules, and the hierarchy of road users, rules H1 to H3. This highway code applies to England, Scotland, and Wales. The highway code is essential reading for everyone. The aim of the highway code is to promote safety on the road, whilst also supporting a healthy, sustainable, and efficient transport system. Wording of the highway code Many of the rules in the code are legal requirements, and if you disobey these rules, you are committing a criminal offense. You may be fined, given penalty points on your license, or be disqualified from driving. In the most serious cases you may be sent to prison. Such rules are identified by the use of the words must slash must not. In addition, the rule includes an abbreviated reference to the legislation which creates the offense. See an explanation of the abbreviations. Although failure to comply with the other rules of the code will not, in itself, because a person to be prosecuted, the highway code may be used in evidence in any court proceedings under the traffic acts, see the road user and the law, to establish liability. This includes rules which use advisory wording such as should slash should not or do slash do not. Knowing and applying the rules. Knowing and applying the rules contained in the highway code could significantly reduce road casualties. Cutting the number of deaths and injuries that occur on our roads every day is a responsibility we all share. The Highway Code can help us discharge that responsibility. Further information on driving slash riding techniques can be found in the Official DVSA Guide to Driving, the Essential Skills, and the Official DVSA Guide to Riding, the Essential Skills. 
Self-Driving Vehicles By self-driving vehicles, we mean those listed as automated vehicles by the Secretary of State for Transport under the Automated and Electric Vehicles Act 2018. To check if your vehicle is self-driving, visit self-driving vehicles listed for use in Great Britain. These vehicles are capable of safely driving themselves when the self-driving function is correctly turned on and the driver follows the Manufacturer's Instructions While the vehicle is driving itself, you do not need to monitor it. Self-driving vehicles differ from vehicles that are fitted only with assisted driving features, like cruise control and lane-keeping assistance. Assisted driving features can do some of the driving, but the driver still needs to be responsible for driving at all times. If you are driving a vehicle using only its assisted driving features, Rule 150 applies. A self-driving vehicle's ability to drive itself may be limited to certain situations or parts of a journey. Things like the type of road, time of day, weather, location, and speed may affect this. You should follow the manufacturer's instructions about when and how to use the self-driving function safely. While a self-driving vehicle is driving itself in a valid situation, you are not responsible for how it drives. You may turn your attention away from the road and you may also view content through the vehicle's built-in infotainment apparatus, if available. But you must still follow all relevant laws. You must be fit to drive, for example, you must be within the drink-drive legal limits and not be under the influence of drugs. See Rules 90-96 to The vehicle must be road legal, for example, it must have an MOT certificate, if applicable and it must be taxed and insured. The vehicle must be roadworthy, see Rules 89 and 97, and Annexes 3 and 6. You will also still be responsible for your passengers and anything else you are carrying, see Rules 98 to 102. You must not do anything illegal, like using a handheld mobile phone or similar handheld device. There are exceptions to this, which are set out in Rule 149. If a self-driving vehicle needs to hand control back to the driver, it will give you enough warning to do this safely. You must always be able and ready to take control and do it when the vehicle prompts you. For example, you should stay in the driving seat and stay awake. When you have taken back control or turned off the self-driving function, you are responsible for all aspects of driving. Hierarchy of Road Users Rule H1 it is important that all road users are aware of the highway code, are considerate to other road users, and understand their responsibility for the safety of others. Everyone suffers when road collisions occur, whether they are physically injured or not. But those in charge of vehicles that can cause the greatest harm in the event of a collision bear the greatest responsibility to take care and reduce the danger they pose to others. This principle applies most strongly to drivers of large goods and passenger vehicles vans slash minibuses, cars slash taxis, and motorcycles. Cyclists, horse riders, and drivers of horse-drawn vehicles likewise have a responsibility to reduce danger to pedestrians. None of this detracts from the responsibility of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists, and horse riders, to have regard for their own and other road users' safety. Always remember that the people you encounter may have impaired sight, hearing, or mobility, and that this may not be obvious. Rule H2 Rule for Drivers, Motorcyclists, Horse-Drawn Vehicles, Horse Riders, and Cyclists At a junction, you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which or from which you are turning. You must give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing and to pedestrians and cyclists on a parallel crossing, see Rule 195. Pedestrians have priority when on a zebra crossing, on a parallel crossing, or at light-controlled crossings, when they have a green signal. You should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross a zebra crossing, and to pedestrians and cyclists waiting to cross a parallel crossing. Horse riders should also give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing, and to pedestrians and cyclists on a parallel crossing. Cyclists should give way to pedestrians on shared-use cycle tracks and to horse riders on bridleways. Only pedestrians may use the pavement. Pedestrians include wheelchair and mobility scooter users.
Pedestrians may use any part of the road and use cycle tracks as well as the pavement, unless there are signs prohibiting pedestrians. Rule H2, wait for the pedestrian to cross the junction before turning. This applies if you are turning right or left into the junction. Rule H3 rule for drivers and motorcyclists. You should not cut across cyclists, horse riders or horse-drawn vehicles going ahead when you are turning into or out of a junction or changing direction or lane, just as you would not turn across the path of another motor vehicle. This applies whether they are using a cycle lane, a cycle track, or riding ahead on the road and you should give way to them. Do not turn at a junction if to do so would cause the cyclist, horse rider, or horse-drawn vehicle going straight ahead to stop or swerve. You should stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. This includes when cyclists are approaching, passing, or moving off from a junction, moving past or waiting alongside stationary or slow-moving traffic, traveling around a roundabout. Rule H3, wait for the cyclist to pass the junction before turning. This also applies if there is a cycle lane or cycle track and if you are turning right or left into the junction. Read the Highway Code online, download the Highway Code audiobook. Try free theory test. Rules for pedestrians. General guidance. Pavements and footways, including any path along the side of a road, should be used if provided. Where possible, avoid being next to the curb with your back to the traffic. If you have to step into the road, look both ways first. Always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Always show due care and consideration for others. If there is no pavement, keep to the right-hand side of the road so that you can see oncoming traffic. You should take extra care and be prepared to walk in single file, especially on narrow roads or in poor light. Keep close to the side of the road. It may be safer to cross the road well before a sharp right-hand bend so that oncoming traffic has a better chance of seeing you. Cross back after the bend. Help other road users to see you. Wear or carry something light-colored, bright or fluorescent in poor daylight conditions. When it is dark, use reflective materials, e.g. armbands, sashes, Waistcoats, jackets, footwear, which can be seen by drivers using headlights up to three times as far away as non-reflective materials. Young children should not be out alone on the pavement or road, see Rule 7. When taking children out, keep between them and the traffic and hold their hands firmly. Strap very young children into pushchairs or use reins. When pushing a young child in a buggy, do not push the buggy into the road when checking to see if it is clear to cross, particularly from between parked vehicles. Organized walks or parades involving large groups of people walking along a road should use a pavement if available, if one is not, they should keep to the left. Lookouts should be positioned at the front and back of the group, and they should wear fluorescent clothes in daylight and reflective clothes in the dark. At night, the lookout in front should show a white light and the one at the back a red light. People on the outside of large groups should also carry lights and wear reflective clothing. Motorways Pedestrians must not be on motorways or slip roads except in an emergency, see Rule 271 and Rule 275. Laws RTRA Sect 17, MT, ENW, are 1982 as amended, Reg 15, 1, B, and MT, S, are Reg 13. Crossing the Road the Green Cross Code. The advice given below on crossing the road is for all pedestrians. Children should be taught the code and should not be allowed out alone until they can understand and use it properly. The age when they can do this is different for each child. Many children cannot judge how fast vehicles are going or how far away they are. Children learn by example, so parents and carers should always use the code in full when out with their children. They are responsible for deciding at what age children can use it safely by themselves. First, find a safe place to cross and where there is space to reach the pavement on the other side. Where there is a crossing nearby, use it. 
It is safer to cross using a subway, a footbridge, an island, a zebra, pelican, toucan, or puffin crossing, or where there is a crossing point controlled by a police officer, a school crossing patrol, or a traffic warden. Otherwise, choose a place where you can see clearly in all directions. Try to avoid crossing between parked cars. See Rule 14, on a blind bend, or close to the brow of a hill. Move to a space where drivers and riders can see you clearly. Do not cross the road diagonally. Stop just before you get to the curb, where you can see if anything is coming. Do not get too close to the traffic. If there's no pavement, keep back from the edge of the road, but make sure you can still see approaching traffic. Look all around for traffic and listen. Traffic could come from any direction. Listen as well, because you can sometimes hear traffic before you see it. If traffic is coming, let it pass. Look all around again and listen. Do not cross until there is a safe gap in the traffic and you are certain that there is plenty of time. Remember, even if traffic is a long way off, it may be approaching very quickly. When it is safe, go straight across the road, do not. Run. Keep looking and listening for traffic while you cross, in case there is any traffic you did not see, or in case other traffic appears suddenly. Look out for cyclists and motorcyclists traveling between lanes of traffic. Do not walk diagonally across the road. At a junction. When you are crossing or waiting to cross the road, other traffic should give way. Look out for traffic turning into the road, especially from behind you, and cross at a place where drivers can see you. If you have started crossing and traffic wants to turn into the road, you have priority, and they should give way, see rules H2 and 170. Pedestrian Safety Barriers Where there are barriers, cross the road only at the gaps provided for pedestrians. Do not climb over the barriers or walk between them and the road. Tactile Paving Raised surfaces that can be felt underfoot provide warning and guidance to blind or partially sighted people. The most common surfaces are a series of raised studs, which are used at crossing points with a dropped curb, or a series of rounded raised bars which are used at level crossings, at the top and bottom of steps and at some other hazards. One-way streets. Check which way the traffic is moving. Do not cross until it is safe to do so without stopping. Bus and cycle lanes may operate in the opposite direction to the rest of the traffic. Bus and cycle lanes. Take care when crossing these lanes as traffic may be moving faster than in the other lanes or against the flow of traffic. Routes shared with cyclists. Cycle tracks may run alongside footpaths or pavements and be separated from them by a feature such as a change of material, a verge, a curb or a white line. Such routes may also incorporate short lengths of tactile paving to help visually impaired people stay on the correct side. On the pedestrian side, this may comprise a series of flat-topped bars running across the direction of travel, ladder pattern. On the cyclist side, the same bars are orientated in the direction of travel, tramline pattern. Some routes shared with cyclists will not be separated by such a feature, allowing cyclists and pedestrians to share the same. Space. Cyclists should respect your safety, see Rule 62, but you should also take care not to obstruct or endanger them. Always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Where signs indicate, some routes are shared between pedestrians, cyclists, horse riders, and horse-drawn vehicles. Cyclists, horse riders, and drivers of horse-drawn vehicles should respect your safety, but you should take care not to obstruct or endanger them. Always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Parked Vehicles If you have to cross between parked vehicles, use the outside edges of the vehicles as if they were the curb. Stop there and make sure you can see all around and that the traffic can see you. Make sure there is a gap between any parked vehicles on the other side so you can reach the pavement. Never cross the road in front of or behind any vehicle with its engine running especially a large vehicle, as the driver may not be able to see you. Reversing Vehicles 
Never cross behind a vehicle which is reversing, showing white reversing lights, or sounding a warning. Moving vehicles. You must not get onto or hold onto a moving vehicle. Law RTA 1988 Sect 26. At night. Wear something reflective to make it easier for others to see you, see Rule 3. If there is no pedestrian crossing nearby, cross. The road near a street light so that traffic can see you more easily. Crossings. At all crossings. When using any type of crossing you should. Always check that the traffic has stopped before you start to cross or push a pram onto a crossing. Always cross between the studs or over the zebra markings. Do not cross at the side of the crossing or on the zigzag lines, as it can be dangerous. You must not loiter on any type of crossing. Laws ZPPPCRGD Reg 19 and RTRA Sect 25, 5. Zebra Crossings. Give traffic plenty of time to see you and to stop before you start to cross. Vehicles will need more time when the road is slippery. Wait until traffic has stopped from both directions or the road is clear before crossing. Remember that traffic does not have to stop until someone has moved on to the crossing. Drivers and riders should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross and must give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing, see Rule H2. Keep looking both ways and listening in case a driver or rider has not seen you and attempts to overtake a vehicle that has stopped. Rule 19, Zebra Crossings Have Flashing Beacons A zebra crossing with a central island is two separate crossings, see Rule 20. Where there is an island in the middle of a zebra crossing, wait on the island and follow Rule 19 before you cross the second half of the road, it is a separate crossing. At Traffic Lights There may be special signals for pedestrians. You should only start to cross the road when the green figure shows. If you have started to cross the road and the green figure goes out, you should still have time to reach the other side, but do not delay. If no pedestrian signals have been provided, watch carefully and do not cross until the traffic lights are red and the traffic has stopped. Keep looking and check for traffic that may be turning the corner. Remember that traffic lights may let traffic move in some lanes, while traffic in other lanes has stopped. Asterisk at Pelican Crossings Only Pelican Crossings These are signal-controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push the control button to activate the traffic signals. When the red figure shows, do not cross. When a steady green figure shows, check the traffic has stopped, then cross with care. When the green figure begins to flash, you should not start to cross. If you have already started, you should have time to finish crossing safely. Puffin crossings differ from pelican crossings as the red and green figures are above the control box on your side of the road and there is no flashing green figure phase. Press the button and wait for the green figure to show. When the road is congested, traffic on your side of the road may be forced to stop even though their lights are green. Traffic may still be moving on the other side of the road, so press the button and wait for the signal to cross. Toucan crossings are light-controlled crossings, which allow cyclists and pedestrians to share crossing space and cross at the same time. They are push-button operated. Pedestrians and cyclists will see the green signal together. Cyclists are permitted to ride across. At some crossings, there is a bleeping sound or voice signal to indicate to blind or partially sighted people when the steady green figure is showing, and there may be a tactile signal to help deafblind people. Equestrian crossings are for horse riders. They have pavement barriers, wider crossing spaces, horse and rider figures in the light panels, and either two sets of controls, one higher, or just one higher control panel. There is often a parallel crossing. Staggered, pelican, or puffin crossings. When the crossings on each side of the central refuge are not in line, they are two separate crossings. On reaching the central island, press the button again and wait for a steady green figure.
Rule 28, staggered crossings, with an island in the middle, are two separate crossings. Crossings controlled by an authorized person. Do not cross the road unless you are signaled to do so by a police officer, traffic warden or school crossing patrol. Always cross in front of them. Where there are no controlled crossing points available, it is advisable to cross where there is an island in the middle of the road. Use the green cross code, see Rule 7, to cross to the island and then stop and use it again to cross the second half of the road. Situations needing extra care Emergency vehicles If an ambulance, fire engine, police or other emergency vehicle approaches using flashing blue lights, headlights, and or sirens, keep off the road. Buses. Get on or off a bus only when it is stopped to allow you to do so. Watch out for cyclists when you are getting off. Never cross the road directly behind or in front of a bus. Wait until it has moved off and you can see clearly in both directions. Tramways. These may run through pedestrian areas. Their path will be marked out by shallow curbs changes in the paving or other road surface, white lines, or yellow dots. Cross at designated crossings, where provided. Elsewhere treat trams as you would other road vehicles and look both ways along the track before crossing. Do not walk along the track as trams may come up behind you. Trams move quietly and cannot steer to avoid you. Railway Level Crossings you must not cross or pass a stop line when the red lights show, including a red pedestrian figure. Also do not cross if an alarm is sounding or the barriers are being lowered. The tone of the alarm may change if another train is approaching. If there are no lights, alarms or barriers, stop, look both ways and listen before crossing. A tactile surface comprising rounded bars running across the direction of pedestrian travel may be installed on the footpath approaching a level crossing to warn visually impaired people of its presence. The tactile surface should extend across the full width of the footway and should be located at an appropriate distance from the barrier or projected line of the barrier. Law TSRGD, Reg 52 Street and Pavement Repairs A pavement may be closed. temporarily because it is not safe to use. Take extra care if you are directed to walk in or to cross the road. Rules for users of powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters. Powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters. There is one class of manual wheelchair, called a Class 1 invalid carriage, and two classes of powered wheelchairs and powered mobility scooters. Manual wheelchairs and Class 2 vehicles are those with an upper speed limit of 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour, and are designed to be used on pavements. Class 3 vehicles are those with an upper speed limit of 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour, and are equipped to be used on the road as well as the pavement. When you are on the road, you should obey the guidance and rules for other vehicles. When on the pavement, you should follow the guidance and rules for pedestrians. On pavements. Pavements are safer than roads and should be used when available. You should give pedestrians priority and show consideration for other pavement users, particularly those with a hearing or visual impairment who may not be aware that you are there. Powered wheelchairs and scooters must not travel faster than 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour, on pavements or in pedestrian areas. You may need to reduce your speed to adjust to other pavement users who may not be able to move out of your way quickly enough or where the pavement is too narrow. Law UICHR 1988 Reg 4 When moving off the pavement onto the road, you should take special care. Before moving off, always look round and make sure it's safe to join the traffic. Always try to use dropped curbs when moving off the pavement, even if this means traveling further to locate one. If you have to climb or descend a curb, always approach it at right angles and don't try to negotiate a curb higher than the vehicle manufacturer's recommendations. On the road You should take care when traveling on the road as you may be traveling more slowly than other traffic. Your machine is restricted to 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour, and may be less visible. When on the road, Class 3 vehicles should travel in the direction of the traffic. 
Class 2 users should always use the pavement when it is available. When there is no pavement, you should use caution when on the road. Class 2 users should, where possible, travel in the direction of the traffic. If you are traveling at night when lights must be used, you should travel in the direction of the traffic to avoid confusing other road users. Law UICHR 1988 Reg 9 You must follow the same rules about using lights, indicators, and horns as for other road vehicles, if your vehicle is fitted with them. At night, lights must be used. Be aware that other road users may not see you and you should make yourself more visible even in the daytime and also at dusk by, for instance, wearing a reflective jacket or reflective strips on the back of the vehicle. Law UICHR 1988 Reg 9 Take extra care at road junctions. When going straight ahead, check to make sure there are no vehicles about to cross your path from the left, the right, or overtaking you and turning left. There are several options for dealing with right turns, especially turning from a major road. If moving into the middle of the road is difficult or dangerous, you can stop on the left-hand side of the road and wait for a safe gap in the traffic, negotiate the turn as a pedestrian, i.e. travel along the pavement and cross the road between pavements where it is safe to do so. Class 3 users should switch the vehicle to the lower speed limit when on pavements. If the junction is too hazardous, it may be worth considering an alternative route. Similarly, when negotiating major roundabouts, i.e. with two or more lanes, it may be safer for you to use the pavement or find a route which avoids the roundabout altogether. All normal parking restrictions should be observed. Your vehicle should not be left unattended if it causes an obstruction to other pedestrians, especially those in wheelchairs. Parking concessions provided under the Blue Badge Scheme, see further reading and conversions, will apply to those vehicles displaying a valid badge. These vehicles must not be used on motorways, see Rule 253. They should not be used on unrestricted dual carriageways where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour, but if they are used on these dual carriageways, they must have a flashing amber beacon. A flashing amber beacon should be used on all other dual carriageways, see Rule 220. Laws RTRA Sect 17, 2, and 3, and RVLR Reg 17, 1, and 26. Rules about animals. Horse-drawn vehicles. Horse-drawn vehicles used on the highway should be operated and maintained in accordance with standards set out in the Department for Transport's Code of Practice for Horse-drawn Vehicles. This code lays down the requirements for a road driving assessment and includes a comprehensive list of safety checks to ensure that a carriage and its fittings are safe and in good working order. The standards set out in the road driving assessment may be required to be met by a local authority if an operator wishes to obtain a local authority license to operate a passenger carrying service. Safety Equipment and Clothing All horse-drawn vehicles should have two red rear reflectors. It is safer not to drive at night, but if you do, a light showing white to the front and red to the rear must be fitted. Law RVLR 1989 Reg 4 Horse Riders Safety Equipment Children under the age of 14 must wear a helmet which complies with the regulations. It must be fastened securely. Other riders should also follow these requirements. These Requirements do not apply to a child who is a follower of the Sikh religion while wearing a turban. Laws H. Phyr. Act 1990, Sect 1 and H. Phyr. Regulations, 1992, Reg 3. Other clothing. You should wear. Boots or shoes with hard soles and heels. Light-colored or fluorescent clothing in daylight. Reflective clothing if you have to ride at night or in poor visibility. At night. It is safer not to ride on the road at night or in poor visibility, but if you do, make sure you wear reflective clothing and your horse has reflective bands above the fetlock joints. A light which shows white to the front and red to the rear should be fitted, with a band, to the rider's right arm and or leg slash riding boot. If you are leading a horse at night, carry a light in your right hand, showing white to the front and red to the rear, and wear reflective clothing on both you and your horse. 
It is strongly recommended that a fluorescent slash reflective tail guard is also worn by your horse. Riding Before you take a horse or horse-drawn vehicle onto the road, you should Ensure all tack fits well and is in good condition. Make sure you can control the horse. If you are an inexperienced horse rider or have not ridden for a while, consider taking the Ride Safe Award from the British Horse Society. The Ride Safe Award provides a foundation for any horse rider to be safe and knowledgeable when riding in all environments, but particularly on the road. For more information, see www.bhs.org.uk. Always ride with other, less nervous horses if you think that your horse will be nervous of traffic. Never ride a horse without both a saddle and bridle. Before riding off or turning, look behind you to make sure it is safe, then give a clear arm signal. When riding on the road you should Keep to the left. Keep both hands on the reins unless you are signaling. Keep both feet in the stirrups. Not carry another person. Not carry anything which might affect your balance or get tangled up with the reins. Keep a horse you are leading to your left. Move in the direction of the traffic flow in a one-way street. Never ride more than two abreast and ride in single file on narrow or busy roads and when riding round bends. You must not take a horse onto a footpath or pavement and you should not take a horse onto a cycle track. Use a bridleway where possible. Equestrian crossings may be provided for horse riders to cross the road and you should use these where available, see crossings. You should dismount at level crossings where a horse rider dismount sign is displayed. Laws HA 1835 Sect 72, R, S, A 1984, Sect 129, 5. Avoid roundabouts wherever possible. If you use them you should. Keep to the left and watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout signal right when riding across exits to show you are not leaving signal left just before you leave the roundabout. Other animals Dogs Do not let a dog out on the road on its own. Keep it on a short lead when walking on the pavement, road or path shared with cyclists or horse riders. When in a vehicle make sure dogs or other animals are suitably restrained so they cannot distract you while you are driving or injure you, or themselves, if you stop quickly. A seatbelt harness, pet carrier, dog cage or dog guard are ways of restraining animals in cars. Animals being herded. These should be kept under control at all times. You should, if possible, send another person along the road in front to warn other road users, especially at a bend or the brow of a hill. It is safer not to move animals after dark, but if you do, then wear reflective clothing and ensure that lights are carried, white at the front and red at the rear of the herd. Rules for Cyclists Overview these rules are in addition to those in the following sections, which apply to all vehicles, except the motorway section. See also you and your bicycle. Clothing. You should avoid clothes that may get tangled in the chain, or in a wheel, or may obscure your lights when you are cycling. Light-colored or fluorescent clothing can help other road users to see you in daylight and poor light, while reflective clothing and or accessories, belt, arm or ankle bands, can increase your visibility in the dark. You should wear a cycle helmet that conforms to current regulations, is the correct size, and securely fastened. Evidence suggests that a correctly fitted helmet will reduce your risk of sustaining a head injury in certain circumstances. Rule 59, help yourself to be seen. At night your cycle must have white front and red rear lights lit. It must also be fitted with a red rear reflector and amber petal reflectors, if manufactured after January 10, 85. White front reflectors and spoke reflectors will also help you to be seen. Flashing lights are permitted, but it is recommended that cyclists who are riding in areas without street lighting use a steady front lamp. Law RVLR Regs 13, 18 and 24. Cycle routes and other facilities. Cycle lanes are marked by a white line, which may be broken, along the carriageway, see Rule 140. 
Use facilities such as cycle lanes and tracks, advanced stop lines and toucan crossings, see Rules 62 and 73, where they make your journey safer and easier. This will depend on your experience and skills and the situation at the time. While such facilities are provided for reasons of safety, cyclists may exercise their judgment and are not obliged to use them. Cycle Tracks These are routes for cyclists that are physically protected or located away from motor traffic, other than where they cross side roads, see Rule 206. Cycle tracks may run alongside footpaths or pavements and be separated by a feature such as a change of material, a verge, a curb or a white line. You must keep to the side intended for cyclists as the pedestrian side remains a pavement or footpath. Some cycle tracks shared with pedestrians will not be separated by such a feature. On such shared-use routes, you should always take care when passing pedestrians, especially children, older or disabled people, and allow them plenty of room. Always be prepared to slow down and stop if necessary, see Rule H2. Law HA 1835 Sect 72 Sharing space with pedestrians, horse riders, and horse-drawn vehicles When riding in places where sharing with pedestrians, horse riders, or horse-drawn vehicles is permitted, take care when passing pedestrians and horse riders, especially children, older adults, or disabled people. Slow down when necessary and let them know you are there, for example, by ringing your bell, it is recommended that a bell is fitted to your bike, or by calling out politely. Remember that pedestrians may be deaf, blind, or partially sighted and that this may not be obvious. Do not pass pedestrians, horse riders, or horse-drawn vehicles closely or at high speed, particularly from behind. You should not pass a horse on their left. Remember that horses can be startled if passed without warning. Always be prepared to slow down and stop when necessary. You must not cycle on a pavement. Laws HA 1835 Sect 72 and R. S. A. 1984, Sect 129. Bus Lanes Most bus lanes may be used by cyclists as indicated on signs. Watch out for people getting on or off a bus. Be very careful when overtaking a bus or leaving a bus lane as you will be entering a busier traffic flow. Do not pass between the curb and a bus when it is at a stop. You should Avoid any actions that could reduce your control of your cycle. Be considerate of the needs of other road users when riding in groups. You can ride two abreast and it can be safer to do so, particularly in larger groups or when accompanying children or less experienced riders. Be aware of drivers behind you and allow them to overtake, for example, by moving into single file or stopping, when you feel it is safe to let them do so. Not ride close behind another vehicle in case it stops suddenly. Do not pass between the curb and a bus when it is at a stop. Not carry anything which will affect your balance or may get tangled up with your wheels or chain. Be considerate of other road users, particularly blind and partially sighted pedestrians, and horse riders, see Rule H1. Let them know you are there when necessary, for example, by calling out or ringing your bell if you have one. It is recommended that a bell be fitted. You should Look all around to make sure it is safe before moving away from the curb, when pulling out to overtake or to pass stationary vehicles, or when turning at junctions or stopping. Watch out for obstructions in the road, such as drains, service covers, and potholes, positioning yourself so you can move to the left, as well as to the right, to avoid them safely. Take care when passing parked vehicles, leaving enough room, a door's width or one meter, to avoid being hit if a car door is opened, and watch out for pedestrians stepping into your path. Be aware of traffic coming up behind you, including other cyclists, and give a clear signal to show other road users what you intend to do see signals to other road users. Take extra care near road humps, narrowings, and other traffic calming features. When cycling on the road, only pass to the left of large vehicles when they are stationary or slow moving, and you should proceed with caution as the driver may not be able to see you. Be particularly careful on the approach to junctions or where a large vehicle could change lanes to the left.
you must not carry a passenger unless your cycle has been built or adapted to carry one. Hold on to a moving vehicle or trailer. Ride in a dangerous, careless, or inconsiderate manner. Ride when under the influence of drink or drugs, including medicine. Law RTA 1988 Sex, 24, 26, 28, 29, and 30 as amended by RTA 1991. You must obey all traffic signs and traffic light signals. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Reg 10, 1. When parking your cycle, find a conspicuous location where it can be seen by passersby. Use cycle stands or other cycle parking facilities wherever possible. Do not leave it where it would cause an obstruction or hazard to other road users. Secure it well so that it will not fall over and become an obstruction or hazard. At traffic light junctions and at cycle-only crossings with traffic lights, you must not cross the stop line when the traffic lights are red. Some junctions have an advanced stop line to enable you to position yourself ahead of other traffic and wait. When the traffic lights are red, you may cross the first stop line, but you must not cross the final stop line, see Rule 178. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 36, 1. Road Junctions Road Positioning When riding on the roads, there are two basic road positions you should adopt, depending on the situation. Ride in the center of your lane, to make yourself as clearly visible as possible, in the following situations. On quiet roads or streets, if a faster vehicle comes up behind you, move to the left to enable them to overtake, if you can do so safely. In slower moving traffic, when the traffic around you starts to flow more freely, move over to the left if you can do so safely so that faster vehicles behind you can overtake. At the approach to junctions or road narrowings where it would be unsafe for drivers to overtake you. When riding on busy roads, with vehicles moving faster than you, allow them to overtake where it is safe to do so, whilst keeping at least 0.5 meters away, and further where it is safer, from the curb edge. Remember that traffic on most dual carriageways moves quickly. Take extra care crossing slip roads. Junctions Some junctions, particularly those with traffic lights, have special cycle facilities, including small cycle traffic lights at eye level height, which may allow you to move or cross separately. For more ahead of other traffic, use these facilities where they make your journey safer and easier. At junctions with no separate cyclist facilities, it is recommended that you proceed as if you were driving a motor vehicle. See rules 170 to 190. Position yourself in the center of your chosen lane, where you feel able to do this safely, to make yourself as visible as possible and to avoid being overtaken where this would be dangerous. If you do not feel safe to proceed in this way, you may prefer to dismount and wheel your bike across the junction. Turning When approaching a junction on the left, watch out for vehicles turning in front of you, out of or into the side road. If you intend to turn left, check first for other cyclists or motorcyclists before signaling. Do not ride on the inside of vehicles signaling or slowing down to turn left. If you are turning right, check the traffic to ensure it is safe, then signal and move to the center of the road. Wait until there is a safe gap in the oncoming traffic and give a final look before completing the turn. It may be safer to wait on the left until there is a safe gap or to dismount and push your cycle across the road. When turning into or out of a side road, you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross, see Rule H2. Two-Stage Turns At some signal-controlled junctions, there may be signs and markings informing cyclists to turn right in two stages. Stage 1. When the traffic lights turn green, cyclists wishing to make the turn should go straight ahead to the location marked by a cycle symbol and turn arrow on the carriageway, then stop and wait there. Stage 2. When the traffic lights on the far side of the junction, now facing the cyclists, turn green, they should then complete the maneuver. Roundabouts Going straight ahead 
If you are going straight ahead at a junction, you have priority over traffic waiting to turn into or out of the side road, unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise, see Rule H3. Check that you can proceed safely, particularly when approaching junctions on the left alongside stationary or slow-moving traffic. Watch out for drivers intending to turn across your path. Remember the driver ahead may not be able to see you, so bear in mind your speed and position in the road. Take great care when deciding whether it is safe to pass stationary or slow-moving lorries and other long vehicles, especially at the approach to junctions, as their drivers may not be able to see you. Remember that they may have to move over to the right before turning left, and that their rear wheels may then come very close to the curb while turning, see Rule 67. Busy Roads when crossing faster or busy main roads, you may find it safer and easier to dismount and push your cycle across. Wait for a safe gap in the traffic before doing so, especially on faster roads and dual carriageways. Make use of traffic islands or central reservations to help you where appropriate. Full details about the correct procedure at roundabouts without. Cycle facilities are contained in Rules 184 to 190. Watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout, remembering that drivers may not easily see you. Crossing the road. If you are turning right, you can ride in the left or right-hand lanes and move left when approaching your exit. Position yourself in the center of your lane if it is safe to do so, see Rule 72, and signal right to indicate that you are not leaving the roundabout. Alternatively, you may feel safer walking your cycle round on the pavement or verge. If you decide to ride round keeping to the left-hand lane you should. Be aware that drivers may not easily see you. Take extra care when cycling across exits. You should signal right to show you are not leaving the roundabout. Watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout. Where a roundabout has separate cycle facilities, you should use these facilities where they make your journey safer and easier although you are not obliged to use them. This will depend on your experience and skills and the situation at the time. Give plenty of room to long vehicles on the roundabout as they need more space to maneuver. Do not ride in the space they need to get round the roundabout. It may be safer to wait until they have cleared the roundabout. Do not ride across equestrian crossings, as they are for horse riders only. Do not ride across a pelican, puffin, or zebra crossing. Dismount and wheel your cycle across. Crossings Toucan crossings are light-controlled crossings, which allow cyclists and pedestrians to share crossing space and cross at the same time. They are push-button operated. Pedestrians and cyclists will see the green signal together. Cyclists are permitted to ride across. Cycle tracks on opposite sides of the road may be linked by cycle-only signaled crossings. You may ride across, but you must not cross until the green cycle symbol is showing. Cycle track crossings can be in spacious pedestrian environments. Cyclists should look out and be prepared to stop for pedestrians, crossing the track informally as well as at these designated points. Take extra care when crossing level crossings and tramways, see Rule 306. You should dismount at level crossings where a cyclist. Dismount sign is displayed. Rules for Motorcyclists General Guidance These rules are in addition to those in the following sections, which apply to all vehicles. See Motorcycle License Requirements on all journeys, the rider and pillion passenger on a motorcycle, scooter, or moped must wear a protective helmet. This does not apply to a follower of the Sikh religion while wearing a turban. Helmets must comply with the regulations, and they must be fastened securely. Riders and passengers of motor tricycles and quadricycles, also called quad bikes, should also wear a protective helmet. Before each journey check that your helmet visor is clean and in good condition. Laws RTA 1988 Sec 16 and 17 and MC, PH, are as amended Reg 4. It is also advisable to wear eye protectors, which must comply with the regulations. Scratched or poorly fitting eye protectors can limit your view when riding, 
particularly in bright sunshine and the hours of darkness. Consider wearing ear protection. Strong boots, gloves, and suitable clothing may help to protect you if you are involved in a collision. Laws RTA Sect 18 and MC, EP, are as amended Reg 4. You must not carry more than one pillion passenger who must sit astride the machine on a proper seat. They should face forward with both feet on the footrests. You must not carry a pillion passenger unless your motorcycle is designed to do so. Provisional license holders must not carry a pillion passenger. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 23, MV, DL, R1999 Reg 16, 6, and CUR 1986 Reg. 102. Daylight Riding. Make yourself as visible as possible from the side as well as the front and rear. You could wear a light or brightly colored helmet and fluorescent clothing or strips. Dipped headlights, even in good daylight, may also make you more conspicuous. However, be aware that other vehicle drivers may still not have seen you or judged your distance or speed correctly, especially at junctions. Riding in the dark. Wear reflective clothing or strips to improve your visibility in the dark. These reflect light from the headlamps of other vehicles, making you visible from a longer distance. See rules 113 to 116 for lighting requirements. Maneuvering. You should be aware of what is behind and to the sides before maneuvering. Look behind you, use mirrors if they are fitted. When in traffic queues look out for pedestrians crossing between vehicles and vehicles emerging from junctions or changing lanes. Position yourself so that drivers in front can see you in their mirrors. Additionally, when filtering in slow-moving traffic, take care and keep your speed low. Remember, observation, signal, maneuver. Motorcycle License Requirements If you have a provisional motorcycle license, you must satisfactorily complete a compulsory basic training, CBT, course. You can then ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters with a power output not exceeding 11 kilowatts on the public road, with L-plates, in Wales either D-plates, L-plates, or both can be used, for up to two years. Under direct access, you can practice on a motorcycle that exceeds 125 cubic centimeters, provided that you meet the minimum age for the category concerned. You're accompanied at all times by a qualified approved trainer who is on another motorcycle and in radio contact with you. Fluorescent or reflective safety clothing is worn during supervision. Red L plates, D plates in Wales, are fitted and provisional license restrictions followed. To obtain your full motorcycle license, you must pass a motorcycle theory test and then a practical test. Law MV, DL, are regs 16 and 68. A one motorcycle license, at age 17 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle without sidecar of between 120 and 125 cubic centimeters. If you pass, you may ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters with power output up to 11 kilowatts, or a motor tricycle with power not exceeding 15 kilowatts. A two-motorcycle license, at age 19 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle without sidecar of at least 395 cubic centimeters, with a power output of at least 25 kilowatts, but not exceeding 35 kilowatts. If you pass, you may ride any motorcycle not exceeding 35 kilowatts and with a power-to-weight ratio not exceeding 0.2 kilowatts per kilogram. Full a motorcycle license, test taken on a motorcycle without sidecar, of at least 595 cubic centimeters, and an engine power of at least 40 kilowatts. This gives you full access to all motorcycles and motor tricycles. You obtain a Category A license by taking progressive access from age 21 or under the direct access scheme from age 24. Category A under progressive access, you can take a Category A practical test at age 21 if you already have an A2 license that you've held for A. Minimum of two years. You don't need to take another theory test or hold a CBT certificate. Category A under direct access. 
This is for riders aged 24 or over. To obtain a Category A license you must Successfully complete a CBT course Pass the Motorcycle Theory Test Pass the Practical Motorcycle Test Passing the practical test on a motorcycle of at least 40 kilowatts, 53.6 brake horsepower, gives immediate access to all sizes of motorcycle. You must not carry a pillion passenger or pull a trailer until you have passed your test. Also see Rule 253 covering vehicles prohibited from motorways. Law MV, DL, R Reg 16. Moped License Requirements. A moped must have an engine capacity not exceeding 50 cubic centimeters, not weigh more than 250 kilograms and be designed to have a maximum speed not exceeding 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. Before June 2003 a license allowed the riding of mopeds up to 50 kilometers per hour. To ride a moped, learners must be 16 or over. Have a provisional moped license. Complete CBT training. You must first pass the theory test for motorcycles and then the moped practical test to obtain your full moped license. If you passed your car driving test before February 1, 2001, you are qualified to ride a moped without L plates and or D plates in Wales, although it is recommended that you complete CBT before riding on the road. If you passed your car driving test after this date, you must complete CBT before riding a moped on the road. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 97 E and 101 and MV DL are regs 38, 4, and 43. Rules for drivers and motorcyclists. Vehicle condition. Vehicle condition. You must ensure your vehicle and trailer comply with the full requirements of the road vehicles, construction and use, regulations and road vehicles lighting regulations, see the road user and the law. Fitness to drive. Make sure that you are fit to drive. You must report to the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, DVLA, any health condition likely to affect your driving. Law RTA 1988 Sect 94 Driving when you are tired greatly increases your risk of collision. To minimize this risk, make sure you are fit to drive. Do not begin a journey if you are tired. Get a good night's sleep before embarking on a long journey. Avoid undertaking long journeys between midnight and 6 a.m., when natural alertness is at a minimum. Plan your journey to take sufficient breaks. A minimum break of at least 15 minutes after every two hours of driving is recommended. If you feel sleepy, stop in a safe place. Do not stop in an emergency area or on a hard shoulder of a motorway. See Rule 262 for guidance on places to take a break when traveling on motorways. Vision. You must be able to read a vehicle number plate, in good daylight, from a distance of 20 meters, or 20.5 meters where the old-style number plate is used. If you need to wear glasses, or contact lenses, to do this, you must wear them at all times while driving. The police have the power to require a driver to undertake an eyesight test. Laws RTA 1988, Sect 96, and MV, DL. Are Reg 40 and SCH 8. Slow down, and if necessary stop, if you are dazzled by bright sunlight. At night or in poor visibility, do not use tinted glasses, lenses, or visors if they restrict your vision. Alcohol and drugs. Do not drink and drive as it will seriously affect your judgment and abilities. In England and Wales, you must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 35 micrograms slash 100 milliliters of breath or a blood alcohol level of more than 80 milligrams slash 100 milliliters of blood. In Scotland, the legal limits are lower. You must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 22 micrograms slash 100 milliliters of breath or a blood alcohol level of more than 50 milligrams slash 100 milliliters of blood. Alcohol will give a false sense of confidence, reduce coordination and slow down reactions, affect judgment of speed, distance, and risk. 
reduce your driving ability, even if you're below the legal limit. Take time to leave your body, you may be unfit to drive in the evening after drinking at lunchtime, or in the morning after drinking the previous evening. The best solution is not to drink at all when planning to drive, because any amount of alcohol affects your ability to drive safely. If you are going to drink, arrange another means of transport. Law RTA 1988 Sex 4, 5 and 11, 2. You must not drive under the influence of drugs or medicine. For medicines, check with your doctor or pharmacist and do not drive if you are advised that you may be impaired. You must not drive if you have illegal drugs or certain medicines in your blood above specified limits. It is highly dangerous so never take illegal drugs if you intend to drive, the effects are unpredictable, but can be even more severe than alcohol and result in fatal or serious road crashes. Illegal drugs have been specified at very low levels so even small amounts of use could be above the specified limits. The limits for certain medicines have been specified at higher levels, above the levels generally found in the blood of patients who have taken normal therapeutic doses. If you are found to have a concentration of a drug above its specified limit in your blood because you have been prescribed or legitimately supplied a particularly high dose of medicine, then you can raise a statutory medical defense, provided your driving was not impaired by the medicine you are taking. Law RTA 1988 Sex 4 and 5 before setting off. Before setting off. You must ensure that. You have a valid license and insurance to drive the vehicle you intend to use, see Annex 3. Your vehicle is legal and roadworthy, see Annexes 3 and 6 for important vehicle maintenance and safety checks. You should ensure that. You have planned your route and allowed sufficient time for brakes and possible delays. You have sufficient fuel or charge for your journey, especially if it includes motorway driving. You know where all the controls are and how to use them. Clothing and footwear do not prevent you using the controls in the correct manner. Your mirrors and seat are adjusted correctly to ensure comfort, full control, and maximum vision. Head restraints are properly adjusted to reduce the risk of neck and spine injuries in the event of a collision. It is recommended for emergency use that you have a mobile telephone containing emergency contacts, e.g. breakdown assistance. You have high visibility clothing. Vehicle towing and loading. Vehicle towing and loading. As a driver, you must not tow more than your license permits. If you passed your car driving test on or after January 1, 1997, you are restricted on the weight of trailer you can tow. You must ensure that both your vehicle and your trailer are in a roadworthy condition. This includes checking that all tires are legal, the trailer braking system is in full working order, and all trailer lights are working correctly. You must not overload your vehicle or trailer. You should not. Tow a weight greater than that recommended by the manufacturer of your vehicle. You should distribute the weight in your caravan or trailer evenly with heavy items over the axles and ensure a downward load on the tow ball. The manufacturer's recommended weight and tow ball load should not be exceeded. This should minimize the possibility of swerving or snaking and loss of control. You must secure your load and it must not stick out dangerously. Make sure any heavy or sharp objects and any animals are secured safely. If there is a collision, they might hit someone inside the vehicle and cause serious injury. If your vehicle is narrower than your trailer or load, or your trailer or load obstructs your rearward view, then towing mirrors must be used. Your trailer must be fitted with a secondary coupling device, such as a safety chain. Carrying a load or pulling a trailer may require you to adjust your headlights. During towing As a driver you should be aware that reduced speed limits apply, see Rule 124. You should be aware that your stopping distance may increase significantly when towing, see Rule 126. You must not drive in the right-hand lane on motorways with three or more lanes, see Rule 265. If the trailer starts to swerve or snake, or you lose control, ease off the accelerator and reduce speed gently to regain control. Do not brake harshly.
breakdowns. In the event of a breakdown, be aware. That towing a vehicle on a tow rope is potentially dangerous. You should consider using a solid tow bar or professional recovery. It may take longer to build up speed when rejoining a carriageway, see also Rule 278. Seat belts and child restraints. You must wear a seat belt in cars, vans, and other goods vehicles if one is fitted, see table below. Adults and children aged 14 years and over must use a seat belt or child restraint where fitted when seated in minibuses, buses, and coaches. Exemptions are allowed for the holders of medical exemption certificates and those making deliveries or collections in goods vehicles when traveling less than 50 meters, approximate 162 feet. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 14 and 15, MV, WSB, R, MV, WSB CFS, R and MV, WSB, A, R. Seat Belt Requirements this table summarizes the main legal requirements for wearing seat belts in cars, vans, and other goods vehicles. Seat Belt Requirements Front Seat Rear Seat Who is Responsible Driver Seat Belt must be worn if fitted. Driver Child under 3 years of Correct Child Correct child restraint must be driver. Age. Restraint. Used. If one is not available in a taxi. Must be. May travel unrestrained. Used. Child from third birthday, correct child, correct child restraint must be used driver. Up to 1.35 meters in restraint where seat belts fitted. Must use height or twelfth must be adult belt if correct child restraint is birthday, whichever used not available in a licensed taxi or they reach first, private hire vehicle, or for reasons o. Unexpected necessity over a short distance, or if too occupied. Restraints prevent fitment of a third. Child over 1.35 meters. Adult seat. Adult seat belt must be worn if driver. Approximate 4 feet 5 inches, in. Belt must be. Available. Height or 12 or 13 year. Worn if. Available. Adult passengers aged. Seat belt. Seat belt must be worn if available passenger. 14 and over. Must be. Worn if. Available. The driver must ensure that all children under 14 years of age in cars, vans, and other goods vehicles wear seat belts or sit in an approved child restraint where required, see table above. If a child is under 1.35 meters, approximate 4 feet 5 inches, tall, a baby seat, child seat, booster seat, or booster cushion must be used suitable for the child's weight and fitted to the manufacturer's instructions. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 14 and 15, MV, WSB, R, MV, WSB CFS, R and MV, WSB, A, R. A rear-facing baby seat must not be fitted into a seat protected by an active frontal airbag, as in a crash it can cause serious injury or death to the child. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 14 and 15, MV, WSB. R, MV, WSB CFS, R and MV, WSB, A, R. Children in cars, vans, and other goods vehicles. Drivers who are carrying children in cars, vans, and other goods vehicles should also ensure that children should get into the vehicle through the door nearest. The curb. Teen year. Child restraints are properly fitted to manufacturer's instructions. Children do not sit behind the rear seats in an estate car or hatchback, unless a special child seat has been fitted. The child safety door locks, where fitted, are used when children are in the vehicle. Children are kept under control. Motorcycle License Requirements If you have a provisional motorcycle license, you must satisfactorily complete a compulsory basic training, CBT, course. 
You can then ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters with a power output not exceeding 11 kilowatts on the public road, with L plates, in Wales either D plates, L plates, or both can be used, for up to two years. Under direct access, you can practice on a motorcycle that exceeds 125 cubic centimeters, provided that you meet the minimum age for the category concerned. You're accompanied at all times by a qualified approved trainer who is on another motorcycle and in radio contact with you. Fluorescent or reflective safety clothing is worn during supervision. Red L plates, D plates in Wales, are fitted and provisional license restrictions followed. To obtain your full motorcycle license, you must pass a motorcycle theory test and then a practical test. Law MV, DL, are regs 16 and 68. A one motorcycle license, at age 17 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle. Without sidecar of between 120 and 125 cubic centimeters. If you pass, you may ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters with power output up to 11 kilowatts, or a motor tricycle with power not exceeding 15 kilowatts. A two motorcycle license, at age 19 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle without sidecar of at least 395 cubic centimeters, with a power output of at least 25 kilowatts, but not exceeding 35 kilowatts. If you pass, you may ride any motorcycle not exceeding 35 kilowatts and with a power to weight ratio not exceeding 0.2 kilowatts per kilogram. Full a motorcycle license, test taken on a motorcycle without sidecar of at least 595 cubic centimeters and an engine power of at least 40 kilowatts this gives you full access to all motorcycles and motor tricycles you obtain a category a license by taking progressive access from age 21 or under the direct access scheme from age 24 category a under progressive access you can take a category a practical test at age 21 if you already have an a2 license that you've held for a minimum of 2 years you don't need to take another theory test or hold a CBT certificate. Category A under direct access, this is for riders aged 24 or over. To obtain a Category A license you must successfully complete a CBT course, pass the motorcycle theory test, pass the practical motorcycle test, Passing the practical test on a motorcycle of at least 40 kilowatts, 53.6 brake horsepower, gives immediate access to all sizes of motorcycle. You must not carry a pillion passenger or pull a trailer until you have passed your test. Also see Rule 253 covering vehicles prohibited from motorways. Law MV, DL, R Reg 16. Moped License Requirements. A moped must have an engine capacity not exceeding 50 cubic centimeters, not weigh more than 250 kilograms and be designed to have a maximum speed not exceeding 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. Before June 2003 a license allowed the riding of mopeds up to 50 kilometers per hour. To ride a moped, learners must be 16 or over. Have a provisional moped license. Complete CBT training. You must first pass the theory test for motorcycles and then the moped practical test to obtain your full moped license. If you passed your car driving test before February 1, 2001, you are qualified to ride a moped without L plates and or D plates in Wales, although it is recommended that you complete CBT before riding on the road. If you passed your car driving test after this date, you must complete CBT before riding a moped on the road. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 97 E and 101 and MV DL are regs 38, 4, and 43. Motor Vehicle Documentation and Learner Driver Requirements Documents Driving License you must have a valid driving license for the category of motor vehicle you are driving. You must inform the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, DVLA, if you change your name and or address. Law RTA 1988 Sex 87 and 99, 4. 
holders of non-European community licenses who are now resident in the UK may only drive on that license for a maximum of 12 months from the date they become resident in this country. To ensure continuous driving entitlement. A British provisional license should be obtained and a driving test passed before the 12-month period elapses, or in the case of a driver who holds a license from a country which has been designated in law for license exchange purposes, the driver should exchange the license for a British one. MOT Cars and motorcycles must normally pass an MOT test three years from the date of the first registration and every year after that. You must not drive a motor vehicle without an MOT certificate when it should have one. Exceptionally, you may drive to a prearranged test appointment or to a garage for repairs required for the test. Driving an unroadworthy motor vehicle may invalidate your insurance. From November 2012, motor vehicles manufactured before 1960 will be exempted from an MOT requirement, although they can still be submitted for a test voluntarily. Owners are still legally required to ensure their vehicle is safe and roadworthy. Law RTA 1988 Sex 45, 47, 49, and 53 Insurance To use a motor vehicle on the road, you must have a valid insurance policy. This must at least cover you for injury or damage to a third party while using that motor vehicle. Before driving any motor vehicle, Make sure that it has this cover for your use or that your own insurance provides adequate cover. You must not drive a motor vehicle without insurance. Also, be aware that even if a road traffic incident is not your fault, you may still be held liable by insurance companies. Law RTA 1988 Sec 143 Uninsured drivers can now be automatically detected by roadside cameras. Further to the penalties for uninsured driving listed on page 126, an offender's vehicle can now be seized by the police, taken away and crushed. Law RTA 1988, Sex 165A and 165B The types of cover available are indicated below. Third-party insurance, this is often the cheapest form of insurance, and is the minimum cover required by law. It covers anyone you might injure or whose property you might damage. It does not cover damage to your own motor vehicle or injury to yourself. Third-party, fire and theft insurance similar to third-party, but also covers you against your motor vehicle being stolen or damaged by fire. Comprehensive insurance, this is the most expensive, but the best insurance. Apart from covering other persons and property against injury or damage, it also covers damage to your own motor vehicle, up to the market value of that vehicle, and personal injury to yourself. Registration Certificate Registration certificates, also called harmonized registration certificates, are issued for all motor vehicles used on the road, describing them, make, model, etc., and giving details of the registered keeper. You must notify the driver and vehicle licensing agency in Swansea as soon as possible when you buy or sell a motor vehicle, or if you change your name or address. For registration certificates issued after March 27, 1997, the buyer and seller are responsible for completing the registration certificates. The seller is responsible for forwarding them to DVLA. The procedures are explained on the back of the registration certificates. Law RV, RNL, are Regs 21, 22, 23, and 24. Vehicle Excise Duty, VD. Vehicle Excise Duty must be paid on all motor vehicles used or kept on public roads. Law Verisex 29 and 33. Statutory Off-Road Notification, SORN. This is a notification to the DVLA that a motor vehicle is not being used on the road. If you are the vehicle keeper and want to keep a motor vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must declare SORN it is an offense not to do so. You then won't have to pay any road tax for that vehicle for a period of 12 months. You need to send a further declaration after that period if the vehicle is still off the public road. The SORN will end if you sell the vehicle and the new owner will become immediately responsible. If your vehicle is in used or off the road, it must have either a SORN declaration or valid insurance. 
Law RV, RL, R2002, Reg, 26, Sked 4. Production of Documents You must be able to produce your driving license and counterpart, a valid insurance certificate and, if appropriate, a valid MOT certificate, when requested by a police officer. If you cannot do this, you may be asked to take them to a police station within seven days. Law RTA 1988 Sex 164 and 165 Learner Drivers Learners driving a car must hold a valid provisional license. They must be supervised by someone at least 21 years old who holds a full EC-EA license for that type of car, automatic or manual, and has held one for at least three years. Laws MV, DL, R Reg 16, and RTA 1988, Sect 87. Vehicles. Any vehicle driven by a learner must display red L plates. In Wales, either red D plates, red L plates, or both, can be used. Plates must conform to legal specifications and must be clearly visible to others from in front of the vehicle and from behind. Plates should be removed or covered when not being driven by a learner except on driving school vehicles. Law MV, DL, R Reg 16 and Sked 4. You must pass the theory test, if one is required, and then a practical driving test for the category of vehicle you wish to drive before driving unaccompanied. Law MV, DL, R Reg 40. General Rules, Techniques, and Advice for All Drivers and Riders. Overview. This section should be read by all drivers, motorcyclists, cyclists, and horse riders. The rules in the highway code do not give you the right of way in any circumstance, but they advise you when you should give way to others. Always give way if it can help to avoid an incident. Signals Signals warn and inform other road users, including pedestrians, download signals to other road users, of your intended actions. You should always Give clear signals in plenty of time, having checked it is not misleading to signal at that time. Use them to advise other road users before changing course or direction, stopping or moving off. Cancel them after use. Make sure your signals will not confuse others. If, for instance, you want to stop after a side road, do not signal until you are passing the road. If you signal earlier, it may give the impression that you intend to turn into the road. Your brake lights will warn traffic behind you that you are slowing down. Use an arm signal to emphasize or reinforce your signal if necessary. Remember that signaling does not give you priority. You should also Watch out for signals given by other road users and proceed only when you are satisfied that it is safe. Be aware that an indicator on another vehicle may not have been cancelled. You must obey signals given by police officers, traffic officers, traffic wardens, and signs used by school crossing patrols. Laws RTRA Sect 28, RTA 1988 Sect 35, TMA 2004 Sect 6, and FTWO Art. 3. Police Stopping Procedures if the police want to stop your vehicle they will, where possible, attract your attention by flashing blue lights, headlights, or sounding their siren or horn, usually from behind, directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. You must then pull over and stop as soon as it is safe to do so. Then switch off your engine. Law RTA 1988 Sect 163 other stopping procedures. Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency officers have powers to stop vehicles on all roads, including motorways and trunk roads, in England and Wales. They will attract your attention by flashing amber lights, either from the front requesting you to follow them to a safe place to stop, or from behind directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. It is an offense not to comply with their directions. You must obey any signals given, download signals, by authorized persons. Laws RTA 1988, Sect 67, and PRA 2002, Sect 41, and Sked 5, 8. 
Traffic officers have powers to stop vehicles on most motorways and some of class roads, in England only. If traffic officers in uniform want to stop your vehicle on safety grounds, e.g. an insecure load, they will, where possible, attract your attention by flashing amber lights, usually from behind, directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. You must then pull over and stop as soon as it is safe to do so. Then switch off your engine. It is an offense not to comply with their directions, see signals by authorized persons. Law RTA 1988, Sex 35 and 163 as amended by TMA 2004, Sec 6. Traffic Light Signals and Traffic Signs You must obey all traffic light signals, download light signals controlling traffic, and traffic signs giving orders, including temporary signals and signs, download traffic signs. Make sure you know, understand, and act on all other traffic and information signs and road markings, download road markings and vehicle markings. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10, 15, 16, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 36, 38 and 40. Flashing Headlights Only flash your headlights to let other road users know that you are there. Do not flash your headlights to convey any other message or intimidate other road users. Never assume that flashing headlights is a signal inviting you to proceed. Use your own judgment and proceed carefully. The Horn Use only while your vehicle is moving and you need to warn other road users of your presence. Never sound your horn aggressively. You must not use your horn. While stationary on the road When driving in a built-up area, between the hours of 11.30 p.m. and 7 o'clock a.m. Except when another road user poses a danger. Law CUR Reg 99 Lighting Requirements You must Ensure all side lights and rear registration plate lights are lit between sunset and sunrise. Use headlights at night, except on a road which has lit street lighting. These roads are generally restricted to a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, or 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, in Wales, unless otherwise specified. Use headlights when visibility is seriously reduced, see Rule 226. Night, the hours of darkness, is defined as the period between half an hour after sunset and half an hour before sunrise. Laws RVLR Regs 3, 24, and 25, in Scotland RTRA 1984 Sect 82, as amended by NRSWA, PAR 59 of Sked 8. You must not. Use any lights in a way which would dazzle or cause discomfort to other road users, including pedestrians, cyclists, and horse riders. Use front or rear fog lights unless visibility is seriously reduced. You must switch them off when visibility improves to avoid dazzling other road users, see Rule 226. In stationary queues of traffic, drivers should apply the parking brake and, once the following traffic has stopped, Take their foot off the footbrake to deactivate the vehicle brake lights. This will minimize glare to road users behind until the traffic moves again. Law RVLR Reg 27 You should also Use dipped headlights, or dim dip if fitted, at night in built-up areas and in dull daytime weather, to ensure that you can be seen. Keep your headlights dipped when overtaking until you are level with the other vehicle and then change to main beam if necessary, unless this would dazzle oncoming road users. Slow down, and if necessary stop, if you are dazzled, by oncoming headlights. Hazard Warning Lights These may be used when your vehicle is stationary, to warn that it is temporarily obstructing traffic. Never use them as an excuse for dangerous or illegal parking. You must not use hazard warning lights while driving or being towed unless you are on a motorway or unrestricted dual carriageway and you need to warn drivers behind you of a hazard or obstruction ahead. Only use them for long enough to ensure that your warning has been observed. Law RVLR Reg 27 Control of the Vehicle Braking 
in normal circumstances. The safest way to brake is to do so early and lightly. Brake more firmly as you begin to stop. Ease the pressure off just before the vehicle comes to rest to avoid a jerky. Stop. In an emergency. Brake immediately. Try to avoid braking so harshly that you lock your wheels. Locked wheels can lead to loss of control. Skids. Skidding is usually caused by the driver braking, accelerating, or steering too harshly or driving too fast for the road conditions. If skidding occurs, remove the cause by releasing the brake pedal fully or easing off the accelerator. Turn the steering wheel in the direction of the skid. For example, if the rear of the vehicle skids to the right, steer immediately to the right to recover. Abs. If your vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes, you should follow the advice given in the vehicle handbook. However, in the case of an emergency, apply the foot brake firmly, do not release the pressure until the vehicle has slowed to the desired speed. The ABS should ensure that steering control will be retained, but do not assume that a vehicle with ABS will stop in a shorter distance. Brakes affected by water. If you have driven through deep water, your brakes may be less effective. Test them at the first safe opportunity by pushing gently on the brake pedal to make sure that they work. If they are not fully effective, gently apply light pressure while driving slowly. This will help to dry them out. Coasting. This term describes a vehicle traveling in neutral or with the clutch pressed down. It can reduce driver control because Engine braking is eliminated. Vehicle speed downhill will increase quickly. Increased use of the foot brake can reduce its effectiveness. Steering response will be affected, particularly on bends and corners. It may be more difficult to select the appropriate gear when needed. The driver and the environment. You must not leave a parked vehicle unattended with the engine running or leave a vehicle engine running unnecessarily while that vehicle is stationary on a public road. Generally, if the vehicle is stationary and is likely to remain so for more than a couple of minutes, you should apply the parking brake and switch off the engine to reduce emissions and noise pollution. However, it is permissible to leave the engine running if the vehicle is stationary in traffic or for diagnosing faults. Law CUR Regs 98 and 107 Speed Limits You must not exceed the maximum speed limits for the road and for your vehicle, see the speed limits table. A speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, or 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, in Wales, generally applies to all roads with street lights, excluding motorways, unless signs show otherwise. Speed limits built UP areas. Single carriage YS. Dual carriage YS. Motorwise. Type of vehicle MPH, KM slash H. MPH, KM slash H, MPH. KM slash H. MPH, KM slash H. Cars and motorcycles, including 30, 60, 96, 70, 112, 70, 112. Car derived vans up to 2, 48 tons maximum laden. Weight Cars towing caravans or trailers, including car derived vans and motorcycles. 30 48 50 80 60 96 60 96 Motorhomes or motor 30 60 96 70 112 70 112 Caravans not exceeding 3.05 48 Tons maximum unladen Weight Motorhomes or motor. 30. 50, 80. 60, 96. 70, 112. Caravans exceeding 3.05 tons maximum unladen weight. 48. 
buses, coaches, and minibuses. 30. 50, 80. 60, 96. 70. Not exceeding 12 meters in. Overall length. 48. 112. Goods vehicles, not exceeding. 7.5 tons maximum laden. 30. 48. 50, 80, 60, 96, 70. 112. Weight. Goods vehicles, exceeding 7.5 tons maximum laden weight, in England and Wales. 30. 48. 50, 80, 60, 96, 60, 96. Goods vehicles, exceeding 7.5 tons maximum laden weight, in Scotland. 30. 48. 40, 64, 50, 80, 60, 96. 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, if exceeding 12 meters in overall length. 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, if articulated or towing a trailer. For speed limits that apply to special types of vehicles, such as oversized vehicles, see further reading. Locally set speed limits may apply, for example, 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, in some built up areas, 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour, on single carriageways, with known hazards. Variable speed limit signs are used on some motorways and dual carriageways to change the maximum speed limit. Speed limits are enforced by the police. Law RTRA Sex 81, 86, 89, and SCH 6. The speed limit is the absolute maximum and does not mean it is safe to drive at that speed irrespective of conditions. Driving at speeds too fast for the road and traffic conditions is dangerous. You should always reduce your speed when the road layout or condition presents hazards, such as bends. Sharing the road with pedestrians, cyclists, and horse riders, particularly children, and motorcyclists. Weather conditions make it safer to do so. Driving at night as it is more difficult to see other road users. Stopping distances. Drive at a speed that will allow you to stop well within the distance you can see to be clear. You should leave enough space between you and the vehicle in front so that you can pull up safely if it suddenly slows down or stops. The safe rule is never to get closer than the overall stopping distance. See typical stopping distances diagram, shown below. Allow at least a two-second gap between you and the vehicle in front on roads carrying faster-moving traffic and in tunnels where visibility is reduced. The gap should be at least doubled on wet roads and increased still further on icy roads. Remember, large vehicles and motorcycles need a greater distance to stop. If driving a large vehicle in a tunnel, you should allow a four-second gap between you and the vehicle in front. If you have to stop in a tunnel, leave at least a 5-meter gap between you and the vehicle in front. Download Typical Stopping Distances Tailgating is where the gap between you and the vehicle in front is too small for you to be able to stop safely if the vehicle in front suddenly brakes. Tailgating is dangerous, intimidating, and can cause collisions, especially when driving at speed. Keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front gives you time to react and stop if necessary. Dangerous and careless driving offenses, such as tailgating, are enforced by the police. Lines and Lane Markings on the Road Download road markings to see diagrams of all lines. A broken white line. This marks the center of the road. When this line lengthens and the gaps shorten, it means that there is a hazard ahead. Do not cross it unless you can see the road is clear and wish to overtake or turn off. Double white lines where the line nearest to you is broken. This means you may cross the lines to overtake if it is safe, provided you can complete the maneuver before reaching a solid white line on your side. White direction arrows on the road indicate that you need to get back onto your side of the road. Double white lines where the line nearest you is solid. 
This means you must not cross or straddle it unless it is safe and you need to enter adjoining premises or a side road. You may cross the line if necessary, provided the road is clear, to pass a stationary vehicle or overtake a pedal cycle, horse or road maintenance vehicle, if they are traveling at 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, or less. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 26 Areas of white diagonal stripes or chevrons painted on the road. These are to separate traffic lanes or to protect traffic turning right. If the area is bordered by a broken white line, you should not enter the area unless it is necessary and you can see that it is safe to do so. If the area is marked with chevrons and bordered by solid white lines, you must not enter it except in an emergency. Laws MT, ENW, are Regs 5, 9, 10 and 16, MT, S, are Regs 4, 8, 9 and 14. RTA Sect 36 and TSRGD 10, 1. Lane Dividers These are short, broken white lines, which are used on wide carriageways to divide them into lanes. You should keep between them. Reflective road studs may be used with white lines. White studs mark the lanes or the middle of the road. Red studs mark the left edge of the road. Amber studs mark the central reservation of a dual carriageway or motorway. Green studs mark the edge of the main carriageway at lay bice and slip roads. Green slash yellow studs indicate temporary adjustments to lane layouts, e.g., where roadworks are taking place. Multi-lane carriageways. Lane discipline. If you need to change lane, first use your mirrors and if necessary take a quick sideways glance to make sure you will not force another road user to change course or speed. When it is safe to do so, signal to indicate your intentions to other road users and when clear, move over. You should follow the signs and road markings and get into the lane as directed. In congested road conditions do not change lanes unnecessarily. Merging in turn is recommended, but only if safe and appropriate when vehicles are traveling at a very low speed, e.g. when approaching roadworks or a road traffic incident. It is not. Recommended at high speed. Single carriageway. Where a single carriageway has three lanes and the road markings or signs do not give priority to traffic in either direction. Use the middle lane only for overtaking or turning right. Remember, you have no more right to use the middle lane than a driver coming from the opposite direction. Do not use the right-hand lane. Where a single carriageway has four or more lanes, use only the lanes that signs or markings indicate. Dual Carriageways A dual carriageway is a road which has a central reservation to separate the carriageways. On a two-lane dual carriageway, you should stay in the left-hand lane. Use the right-hand lane for overtaking or turning right. After overtaking, move back to the left-hand lane when it is safe to do so. On a dual carriageway with three or more lanes, you may use the middle lanes or the right-hand lane to overtake, but you should return to the middle lanes and then the left-hand lane when it is safe to do so. Climbing and Crawler Lanes These are provided on some hills. Use this lane if you are driving a slow-moving vehicle or if there are vehicles behind you wishing to overtake. Be aware of the signs and road markings which indicate the lane is about to end. Cycle Lanes and Cycle Tracks Cycle lanes are shown by road markings and signs. You must not drive or park in a cycle lane marked by a solid white line during its times of operation. Do not drive or park in a cycle lane marked by a broken white line unless it is unavoidable. You must not park in any cycle lane whilst waiting restrictions apply. You should give way to any cyclists in a cycle lane, including when they are approaching from behind you. Do not cut across them when you are turning or when you are changing lane. See Rule H3. Be prepared to stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists before crossing the cycle lane. Cycle tracks are routes for cyclists that are physically protected or located away from motor traffic, other than where they cross side roads. Cycle tracks may be shared with pedestrians. 
You should give way to cyclists approaching or using the cycle track when you are turning into or out of a junction, see Rule H3. Be prepared to stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists before crossing the cycle track, which may be used by cyclists traveling in both directions. Bear in mind that cyclists are not obliged to use cycle lanes or cycle tracks. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8 Bus Lanes These are shown by road markings and signs that indicate which, if any, other vehicles are permitted to use the bus lane. Unless otherwise indicated, you should not drive in a bus lane during its period of operation. You may enter a bus lane to stop, to load or unload, where this is not prohibited. High Occupancy Vehicle Lanes and Other Designated Vehicle Lanes Lanes may be restricted for use by particular types of vehicle. These restrictions may apply some or all of the time. The operating times and vehicle types will be indicated on the accompanying traffic signs. You must not drive in such lanes during their times of operation unless signs indicate that your vehicle is permitted. Download Traffic Signs Vehicles permitted to use designated lanes may or may not include cycles, buses, taxis, licensed private hire vehicles, motorcycles, heavy goods vehicles, HGVs, and high-occupancy vehicles, HOVs. Where HOV lanes are in operation, they must only be used by vehicles containing at least the minimum number of people. Indicated on the traffic signs. Any other vehicles, such as buses and motorcycles, as indicated on signs prior to the start of the lane, irrespective of the number of occupants. Laws RTRA Sects 5 and 8 and RTA 1988, Sect 36. One-way streets. Traffic must travel in the direction indicated by signs. Buses and or cycles may have a contraflow lane. Choose the correct lane for your exit as soon as you can. Do not change lanes suddenly. Unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise, you should use the left-hand lane when going left, the right-hand lane when going right, the most appropriate lane when going straight ahead. Remember, traffic could be passing on both sides. Laws RTA 1988, Sec. 36 and RTRA, Sec. 5 and 8. You must not Drive dangerously. Drive without due care and attention. Drive without reasonable consideration for other road users. Driving requires focus and attention at all times. Remember, you may be driving dangerously or traveling too fast even if you don't mean to. Law RTA 1988 Sex 2 and 3 as amended by RTA 1991. You must not drive on or over a pavement, footpath, or Bridleway, except to gain lawful access to property, or in the case of an emergency. Laws HA 1835, Sect. 72, and RTA 1988, Sect. 34. Adapt your driving to the appropriate type and condition of road you are on. In particular, do not treat speed limits as a target. It is often not appropriate or safe to drive at the maximum speed limit. Take the road and traffic conditions into account. Be prepared for unexpected or difficult situations, for example, the road being blocked beyond a blind bend. Be prepared to adjust your speed as a precaution. Where there are junctions, be prepared for road users emerging. In side roads and country lanes, look out for unmarked junctions where nobody has priority. Be prepared to stop at traffic control systems, road works, pedestrian crossings, or traffic lights as necessary. Try to anticipate what pedestrians and cyclists might do. If pedestrians, particularly children, are looking the other way, they may step out into the road without seeing you. Be considerate. Be careful of and considerate towards all types of road users, especially those requiring extra care. See Rule 204. You must not throw anything out of a vehicle, for example, cigarette ends, cans, paper, or carrier bags. This can endanger other road users, particularly motorcyclists and cyclists. Try to be understanding if other road users cause problems, they may be inexperienced or not know the area well. Be patient, 
remember that anyone can make a mistake. Not allow yourself to become agitated or involved if someone is behaving badly on the road. This will only make the situation worse. Pull over, calm down and, when you feel relaxed, continue your journey. Slow down and hold back if a road user pulls out into your path at a junction. Allow them to get clear. Do not overreact by driving too close behind to intimidate them. Safe driving and riding needs concentration. Avoid distractions when driving or riding such as Loud music, this may mask other sounds. Trying to read maps. Inserting a cassette or CD or tuning a radio. Arguing with your passengers or other road users. Eating and drinking. Smoking. You must not smoke in public transport vehicles or in vehicles used for work purposes in certain prescribed circumstances. Separate regulations apply to England, Wales, and Scotland. In England and Wales, the driver must not smoke or allow anyone to smoke in an enclosed private vehicle carrying someone under 18, including motor caravans. Laws TSF, EV, R regs, TSFP, W, R regs, TPSCP, S, R regs, SF, PV, R regs and SF, W, R regs. Mobile phones and in-vehicle technology. You must exercise proper control of your vehicle at all times. You must enote as a handheld mobile phone or similar device capable of interactive communication, such as a tablet, for any purpose when driving or when supervising a learner driver. This ban covers all use of a handheld interactive communication device, and it applies even when the interactive communication capability is turned off or unavailable. You must not pick up the phone or similar device while driving to dial a number and then put it in the cradle for the duration of the conversation. You must not pick up and use your handheld phone or similar device while stationary in traffic. There is an exception to call 999 or 112 in a genuine emergency when it is unsafe or impractical to stop. There is also an exception if you are using a handheld mobile phone or similar device to make a contactless payment at a contactless payment terminal. Your vehicle must be stationary, and the goods or services must be received at the same time as, or after, the contactless payment. Never use a handheld microphone when driving. Using hands-free equipment is also likely to distract your attention. From the road. It is far safer not to use any telephone or similar. Device while you are driving or riding, find a safe place to stop first or use the voicemail facility and listen to messages later. You may park your vehicle using a handheld remote control app or device. The app or device must be legal, and you should not put other people in danger when you use it. There is a danger of driver distraction being caused by in-vehicle systems such as satellite navigation systems, congestion warning systems, PCs, multimedia, etc. You must exercise proper control of your vehicle at all times. Do not rely on driver assistance systems such as cruise control or lane departure warnings. They are available to assist, but you should not reduce your concentration levels. Do not be distracted by maps or screen-based information, such as navigation or vehicle management systems, while driving or riding. If necessary, find a safe place to stop. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 2 and 3 and CUR Reg 104 In slow-moving traffic You should Reduce the distance between you and the vehicle ahead to maintain traffic flow. Never get so close to the vehicle in front that you cannot stop safely. Leave enough space to be able to maneuver if the vehicle in front breaks down or an emergency vehicle needs to get past. Not change lanes to the left to overtake. Allow access into and from side roads, as blocking these will add to congestion. Allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross in front of you. Be aware of cyclists and motorcyclists who may be passing on either side. Rule 151, do not block access to a side road. Driving in built-up areas. Residential streets. You should drive slowly and carefully on streets where there are likely to be pedestrians, cyclists, and parked cars. In some areas a 20 mph, 
32 km per hour, maximum speed limit may be in force. Lookout 4. Vehicles emerging from junctions or driveways. Vehicles moving off. Car doors opening. Pedestrians. Children running out from between parked cars. Cyclists and motorcyclists. Traffic calming measures. On some roads, there are features such as road humps, chicanes, and narrowings, which are intended to slow you down. When you approach these features reduce your speed. Allow cyclists and motorcyclists room to pass through them. Maintain a reduced speed along the whole of the stretch of road within the calming measures. Give way to oncoming road users if directed to do so by signs. You should not overtake other moving road users while in these areas. Country roads. Take extra care on country roads and reduce your speed at approaches to bends, which can be sharper than they appear, and at junctions and turnings, which may be partially hidden. Be prepared for pedestrians, horse riders, cyclists, slow-moving farm vehicles, or mud on the road surface. Make sure you can stop within the distance you can see to be clear. You should also reduce your speed where country roads enter villages. Single-track roads. These are only wide enough for one vehicle. They may have special passing places. If you see a vehicle coming towards you, or the driver behind wants to overtake, pull into a passing place on your left, or wait opposite a passing place on your right. Give way to vehicles coming uphill whenever you can. If necessary, reverse until you reach a passing place to let the other vehicle pass. Slow down when passing pedestrians, cyclists, and horse riders. Do not park in passing places. Vehicles prohibited from using roads and pavements. Certain motorized vehicles do not meet the construction and technical requirements for road vehicles and are generally not. Intended, not suitable and not legal for road, pavement, footpath, cycle path, or bridleway use. These include most types of miniature motorcycles, also called mini-motos and motorized scooters, also called go-peds, which are powered by electric or internal combustion engines. These types of vehicle must not be used on roads, pavements, footpaths, or bridleways. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 34, 41A, 42, 47, 63 and 66, HA 1835, Sec 72, and R. S. A Sec 129. Certain models of motorcycles, motor tricycles and quadricycles, also called quad bikes, are suitable only for off-road use and do not meet legal standards for use on roads. Vehicles that do not meet these standards must not be used on roads. They must not be used on pavements, footpaths, cycle paths, or bridleways either. You must make sure that any motorcycle, motor tricycle, quadricycle, or any other motor vehicle meets legal standards and is properly registered taxed and insured before using it on the roads. Even when registered, taxed and insured for the road, vehicles must not be used on pavements. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 34, 41A, 42, 47, 63, 66, and 156, HA 1835, Sect. 72, R, S, a Sect 129, and Vera SS1, 29, 31A, and 43A. Using the road. General rules. Before moving off you should. Use all mirrors to check the road is clear. Look round to check the blind spots, the areas you are unable to see in the mirrors. Signal if necessary before moving out. Look round for a final check. Move off only when it is safe to do so. Once moving you should. Keep to the left, unless road signs or markings indicate. Otherwise. The exceptions are when you want to overtake, turn right or pass parked vehicles or pedestrians in the road. Keep well to the left on right-hand bends. This will improve your view of the road and help avoid the risk of colliding with traffic approaching from the opposite direction. Drive or ride with both hands on the wheel or handlebars where possible. This will help you to remain in full control of the vehicle at all times.
you may use driver assistance systems while you are driving. Make sure you use any system according to the manufacturer's instructions. Be aware of other road users, especially cycles and motorcycles who may be filtering through the traffic. These are more difficult to see than larger vehicles, and their riders are particularly vulnerable. Give them plenty of room, especially if you are driving a long vehicle or towing a trailer. You should give way to cyclists when you are changing direction or lane, do not cut across them. Select a lower gear before you reach a long downhill slope. This will help to control your speed. When towing, remember the extra length will affect overtaking and maneuvering. The extra weight will also affect the braking and acceleration. Mirrors All mirrors should be used effectively throughout your journey. You should Use your mirrors frequently so that you always know what is behind and to each side of you. Use them in good time before you signal or change direction or speed. Be aware that mirrors do not cover all areas and there will be blind spots. You will need to look round and check. Remember, mirrors, signal, maneuver. Overtaking Before overtaking, you should make sure the road is sufficiently clear ahead. Road users are not beginning to overtake you. There is a suitable gap in front of the road user you plan to overtake. Overtake only when it is safe and legal to do so. You should not get too close to the vehicle you intend to overtake. Use your mirrors, signal when it is safe to do so, take a quick sideways glance if necessary into the blind spot area, and then start to move out. Not assume that you can simply follow a vehicle ahead which is overtaking, there may only be enough room for one vehicle. Move quickly past the vehicle you are overtaking, once you have started to overtake. Allow plenty of room. Move back to the left as soon as you can, but do not cut in. Take extra care at night and in poor visibility when it is harder to judge speed and distance. Give way to oncoming vehicles before passing parked vehicles or other obstructions on your side of the road. Only overtake on the left if the vehicle in front is signaling to turn right and there is room to do so. Stay in your lane if traffic is moving slowly in queues. If the queue on your right is moving more slowly than you are, you may pass on the left. Cyclists may pass slower moving or stationary traffic on their right or left and should proceed with caution as the driver may not be able to see you. Be careful about doing so, particularly on the approach to junctions, and especially when deciding whether it is safe to pass lorries or other large vehicles. Give motorcyclists, cyclists, and horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles at least as much room as you would when overtaking a car. See Rules 211 to 215. As a guide, leave at least 1.5 meters when overtaking cyclists at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, and give them more space when overtaking at higher speeds. Pass horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles at speeds under 10 miles per hour and allow at least 2 meters of space. Allow at least 2 meters of space and keep to a low speed when passing a pedestrian who is walking in the road, for example, where there is no pavement. Take extra care and give more space when overtaking motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles, and pedestrians in bad weather, including high winds, and at night. You should wait behind the motorcyclist, cyclist, horse rider, horse-drawn vehicle, or pedestrian and not overtake if it is unsafe or not possible to meet these clearances. Remember, mirrors, signal, maneuver. Rule 163 Give vulnerable road users at least as much space as you would a car. Large vehicles. Overtaking these is more difficult. You should. Drop back. This will increase your ability to see ahead and should allow the driver of the large vehicle to see you in their mirrors. Getting too close to large vehicles, including agricultural vehicles such as a tractor with a trailer or other fixed equipment will obscure your view of the road ahead and there may be another slow-moving vehicle in front. Make sure that you have enough room to complete your overtaking maneuver before committing yourself. It takes longer to pass a large vehicle. If in doubt, do not overtake. 
not assume you can follow a vehicle ahead which is overtaking a long vehicle. If a problem develops, they may abort overtaking and pull back in. You must not overtake. If you would have to cross or straddle double white lines with a solid line nearest to you, but see Rule 129. If you would have to enter an area designed to divide traffic, if it is surrounded by a solid white line. The nearest vehicle to a pedestrian crossing, especially when it is stopped to let pedestrians cross. If you would have to enter a lane reserved for buses, trams, or cycles during its hours of operation. After a no overtaking sign and until you pass a sign cancelling the restriction. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36, TSRGD Regs 10, 22, 23, and 24. ZPPPCRGD Reg 24. Do not overtake if there is any doubt, or where you cannot see far enough ahead to be sure it is safe. For example, when you are approaching a corner or bend, a hump bridge, the brow of a hill. Do not overtake where you might come into conflict with other road users. For example, approaching or at a road junction on either side of the road, where the road narrows, when approaching a school crossing patrol, on the approach to crossing facilities, where a vehicle ahead is slowing to stop for a pedestrian that is. Crossing from a pedestrian island, see Rule 165. Between the curb and a bus or tram when it is at a stop. Where traffic is queuing at junctions or roadworks. When you would force another road user to swerve or slow down. At a level crossing. When a road user is indicating right, even if you believe the signal should have been cancelled. Do not take a risk, wait for the signal to be cancelled. Stay behind if you are following a cyclist approaching a roundabout or junction, and you intend to turn left. Do not cut across cyclists going ahead, including those using cycle lanes and cycle tracks, see Rule H3. Stay behind if you are following a horse rider or horse-drawn vehicle approaching a roundabout or junction, and you intend to turn left. Do not cut across a horse rider or horse-drawn vehicle going ahead. When a tram is standing at a curbside tram stop and there is no clearly marked passing lane for other traffic. Being overtaken. If a driver is trying to overtake you, maintain a steady course and speed, slowing down if necessary to let the vehicle pass. Never obstruct drivers who wish to pass. Speeding up or driving unpredictably while someone is overtaking you is dangerous. Drop back to maintain a two-second gap if someone overtakes and pulls into the gap in front of you. Do not hold up a long queue of traffic, especially if you are driving a large or slow-moving vehicle. Check your mirrors frequently, and if necessary, pull in where it is safe and let traffic pass. Road junctions. Take extra care at junctions. You should. Watch out for cyclists, motorcyclists, and pedestrians, including powered wheelchairs slash mobility scooter users, as they are not always easy to see. Be aware that they may not have seen or heard you if you are approaching from behind. Give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which or from which you are turning. If they have started to cross, they have priority, so give way, see Rule H2. Remain behind cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and motorcyclists at junctions even if they are waiting to turn and are positioned close to the curb. Watch out for long vehicles which may be turning at a junction ahead, they may have to use the whole width of the road to make the turn, see Rule 221. Watch out for horse riders who may take a different line on the road from that which you would expect. Not assume, when waiting at a junction, that a vehicle coming from the right and signaling left will actually turn. Wait and Make sure Look all around before emerging. Do not cross or join a road until there is a gap large enough for you to do so safely. Rule 170, give way to pedestrians who have started to cross. You must stop behind the line at a junction with a stop sign and a solid white line across the road. Wait for a safe gap in the traffic before you move off. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 16. 
The approach to a junction may have a giveway sign or a triangle marked on the road. You must give way to traffic on the main road when emerging from a junction with broken white lines. Across the road. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10, 1, 16, 1, and 25. Dual carriageways. When crossing or turning right, first assess whether the central reservation is deep enough to protect the full length of your vehicle. If it is, then you should treat each half of the carriageway as a separate road. Wait in the central reservation until there is a safe gap in the traffic on the second half of the road. If the central reservation is too shallow for the length of your vehicle, wait until you can cross both carriageways in one go. Box Junctions These have crisscross yellow lines painted on the road, download road markings. You must not enter the box until your exit road or lane is clear. However, you may enter the box. And wait when you want to turn right, and are only stopped from doing so by oncoming traffic or by other vehicles waiting to turn right. At signaled roundabouts you must not enter the box unless you can cross over it completely without stopping. Law TSRGD Regs 10, 1, and 29, 2. Junctions controlled by traffic lights. You must stop behind the white stop line across your side of the road unless the light is green. If the amber light appears, you may go on only if you have already crossed the stop line or are so. Close to it that to stop might cause a collision. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 36. You must not move forward over the white line when the red light is showing. Only go forward when the traffic lights are green if there is room for you to clear the junction safely or you are taking up a position to turn right. If the traffic lights are not working, treat the situation as you would an unmarked junction and proceed with great care. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 36. Green Filter Arrow. This indicates a filter lane only. Do not enter that lane unless you want to go in the direction of the arrow. You may proceed in the direction of the green arrow when it, or the full green light shows. Give other traffic, especially cyclists, time and room to move into the correct lane. Advanced Stop Lines. Some signal-controlled junctions have advanced stop lines to allow cyclists to be positioned ahead of other traffic. Motorists, including motorcyclists, must stop at the first white line reached if the lights are amber or red and should avoid blocking the way or encroaching on the marked area at other times, e.g. if the junction ahead is blocked. If your vehicle has proceeded over the first white line at the time that the signal goes red, you should stop as soon as possible and must stop at the second white line. Allow cyclists, including any moving or waiting alongside you, enough time and space to move off when the green signal shows. Drivers of large vehicles should stop sufficiently far behind the first white line so that they can see the whole area where cyclists may be waiting, allowing for any blind spot in front of the vehicle. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10, 36, 1, and 43, 2. Rule 178, do not unnecessarily encroach on the cyclist's waiting area. Turning right. Well before you turn right you should. Use your mirrors to make sure you know the position and movement of traffic behind you. Give a right turn signal. Take up a position just left of the middle of the road or in the space marked for traffic turning right. Leave room for other vehicles to pass on the left, if possible. Wait until there is a safe gap between you and any oncoming vehicle. Watch out for cyclists, motorcyclists, pedestrians, and other road users. Check your mirrors and blind spot again to make sure you are not being overtaken, then make the turn. Do not cut the corner. Take great care when turning into a main road. You will need to watch for traffic in both directions and wait for a safe gap. Remember, mirrors, signal, maneuver. Rule 180. Position your vehicle correctly to avoid obstructing traffic. When turning right at crossroads where an oncoming vehicle is also turning right, there is a choice of two methods. 
Turn right side to right side, keep the other vehicle on your right and turn behind it. This is generally the safer method as you have a clear view of any approaching traffic when completing your turn. Left side to left side, turning in front of each other. This can block your view of oncoming vehicles, so take extra care. Cyclists and motorcyclists, in particular, may be hidden from your view. Road layout, markings, or how the other vehicle is positioned can determine which course should be taken. Turning left. Use your mirrors and give a left turn signal well before you turn left. Do not overtake just before you turn left and watch out for traffic coming up on your left before you make the turn, especially if driving a large vehicle. Cyclists, motorcyclists, and other road users in particular may be hidden from your view. When turning, keep as close to the left as is safe and practicable. Give way to any vehicles using a bus lane, cycle lane, cycle track, or tramway from either direction, including when they are passing slow-moving or stationary vehicles on either side. Roundabouts On approaching a roundabout, take notice and act on all the information available to you, including traffic signs, traffic lights, and lane markings which direct you into the correct lane. You should Use mirrors, signal, maneuver at all stages. Decide as early as possible which exit you need to take. Give an appropriate signal, see Rule 186. Time your signals so as not to confuse other road users. Get into the correct lane. Adjust your speed and position to fit in with traffic conditions. Be aware of the speed and position of all the road users around you. When reaching the roundabout you should. Give priority to traffic approaching from your right unless directed otherwise by signs, road markings, or traffic lights. Check whether road markings allow you to enter the roundabout without giving way. If so, proceed, but still look to the right before joining. Watch out for all other road users already on the roundabout, be aware they may not be signaling correctly or at all. Look forward before moving off to make sure traffic in front has moved off. Signals and Position when taking the first exit to the left, unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. Signal left and approach in the left-hand lane. Keep to the left on the roundabout and continue signaling left to leave. When taking an exit to the right or going full circle, unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. Signal right and approach in the right-hand lane. Keep to the right on the roundabout until you need to change lanes to exit the roundabout. Signal left after you have passed the exit, before the one you want. When taking any intermediate exit, unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. Select the appropriate lane on approach to the roundabout. You should not normally need to signal on approach. Stay in this lane until you need to alter course to exit the roundabout. Signal left after you have passed the exit, before the one you want. When there are more than three lanes at the entrance to a roundabout, use the most appropriate lane on approach and through it. You should give priority to cyclists on the roundabout. They will be traveling more slowly than motorized traffic. Give them plenty of room and do not attempt to overtake them within their lane. Allow them to move across your path as they travel around the roundabout. Cyclists, horse riders, and horse-drawn vehicles may stay in the left-hand lane when they intend to continue across or around the roundabout and should signal right to show you they are not leaving the roundabout. Drivers should take extra care when entering a roundabout to ensure that they do not cut across cyclists, horse riders, or horse-drawn vehicles in the left-hand lane, who are continuing around the roundabout. In all cases, watch out for and give plenty of room to Pedestrians who may be crossing the approach and exit roads. Traffic crossing in front of you on the roundabout, especially vehicles intending to leave by the next exit. Traffic which may be straddling lanes or positioned incorrectly. Motorcyclists. Long vehicles, including those towing trailers. These might have to take a different course or straddle lanes either approaching or on the roundabout because of their length. Watch out for their signals. Mini roundabouts. 
approach these in the same way as normal roundabouts. All vehicles must pass round the central markings except large vehicles, which are physically incapable of doing so. Remember, there is less space to maneuver and less time to signal. Avoid making U-turns at many roundabouts. Beware of others doing this. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10, 1, and 16, 1. At double mini roundabouts treat each roundabout separately and give way to traffic from the right. Multiple roundabouts. At some complex junctions, there may be a series of mini roundabouts at each intersection. Treat each mini roundabout separately and follow the normal rules. Pedestrian crossings. You must not park on a crossing or in the area covered by the zigzag lines. You must not overtake the moving vehicle nearest the crossing or the vehicle nearest the crossing which has stopped to give way to pedestrians. Laws ZPPPCRGD Regs 18, 20 and 24, RTRA Sect 25, 5, and TSRGD Regs 10, 27, and 28. In slow-moving and queuing traffic, you should keep crossings completely clear, as blocking these makes it difficult and dangerous for pedestrians to cross. You should not enter a pedestrian crossing if you are unable to completely clear the crossing. Nor should you block advanced stop lines for cycles. Rule 192. Keep the crossing clear. You should take extra care where the view of either side of the crossing is blocked by queuing traffic or incorrectly parked vehicles. Pedestrians may be crossing between stationary vehicles. Allow pedestrians plenty of time to cross and do not harass them by revving your engine or edging forward. Zebra and Parallel Crossings As you approach a zebra crossing, look out for pedestrians waiting to cross and be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. You should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. You must give way when a pedestrian has moved on to a crossing. Allow more time for stopping on wet or icy roads. Do not wave, flash your lights or use your horn to invite. Pedestrians across, this could be dangerous if another vehicle is approaching. Be patient, do not sound your horn or rev your engine as this can be intimidating. Be aware of pedestrians approaching from the side of the crossing. A zebra crossing with a central island is two separate crossings, see rules 19 and 20. Parallel crossings are similar to zebra crossings, but include a cycle route alongside the black and white stripes. As you approach a parallel crossing, look out for pedestrians or cyclists waiting to cross and slow down or stop. You should give way to pedestrians or cyclists waiting to cross. You must give way when a pedestrian or cyclist has moved on to a crossing. Allow more time for stopping on wet or icy roads. Do not wave, flash your lights or use your horn to invite pedestrians or cyclists across, this could be dangerous if another vehicle is approaching. Be patient, do not sound your horn or rev your engine as this can be intimidating. Be aware of pedestrians or cyclists approaching from the side of the crossing. A parallel crossing with a central island is two separate crossings, see rules 19 and 20. Law ZPPPCRGD Reg 25 Signal Controlled Crossings Pelican Crossings These are signal controlled crossings where flashing amber follows the red stop light. You must stop when the red light shows. When the amber light is flashing, you must give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. If the amber light is flashing and there are no pedestrians on the crossing, you may proceed with caution. Laws ZPPPCRGD Regs 23 and 26 and RTRA Sect 25, 5. Pelican crossings which go straight across the road are one crossing, even when there is a central island. You must wait for pedestrians who are crossing from the other side of the island. Laws ZPPPCRGD Reg 26 and RTRA Sect 25, 5. Give way to anyone still crossing after the signal for vehicles has changed to green. This advice applies to all crossings. Toucan, Puffin, and Equestrian Crossings 
These are similar to Pelican crossings, but there is no flashing amber phase. The light sequence for traffic at these three crossings is the same as at traffic lights. If the signal-controlled crossing is not working, proceed with extreme caution. Do not enter the crossing if you are unable to completely clear it, to avoid obstructing pedestrians, cyclists, or horse riders. Reversing Choose an appropriate place to maneuver. If you need to turn your vehicle around, wait until you find a safe place. Try not to reverse or turn round in a busy road, find a quiet side road or drive round a block of side streets. Do not reverse from a side road into a main road. When using a driveway, reverse in and drive out if you can. Look carefully before you start reversing. You should. Use all your mirrors. Check the blind spot behind you, the part of the road you cannot see easily in the mirrors. Check there are no pedestrians, particularly children. Cyclists, other road users, or obstructions in the road behind you. Reverse slowly while checking all around. Looking mainly through the rear window. Being aware that the front of your vehicle will swing out as you turn. Get someone to guide you if you cannot see clearly. You must not reverse your vehicle further than necessary. Law, C-U-R Reg 106 The Road User and the Law The following list can be found abbreviated throughout the code. It is not intended to be a comprehensive guide, but a guide to some of the important points of law. For the precise wording of the law, please refer to the various acts and regulations, as amended, indicated in the code. Abbreviations are listed below. Most of the provisions apply on all roads throughout Great Britain, although there are some exceptions. The definition of a road in England and Wales is any highway and any other road to which the public has access and includes bridges over which a road passes, RTA 1988 Sect 192, 1. In Scotland, there is a similar definition which is extended to include any way over which the public have a right of passage, R, S, in 1984 Sect 151, 1. It is important to note that references to road therefore generally include footpaths, bridleways, and cycle tracks, and many roadways and driveways on private land, including many car parks. In most cases, the law will apply to them and there may be additional rules for particular paths or ways. Some serious driving offenses, including drink driving offenses, also apply to all public places, for example, public car parks. Acts and regulations from 1988 can be viewed on the UK legislation site. Acts and regulations prior to 1988 are only available in their original print format, which may be obtained from the stationary office as detailed inside the back cover. Acts and regulations prior to 1988 Chronically Sick and Disabled Persons Act 1970 CSDPA Functions of Traffic Wardens Order 1970 FTWO Greater London General Powers, Act 1974 GL, GP, a Highway Act 1835 or 1980, as indicated, HA. Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Regulations 1982 MT, ENW, are Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Amended Regulations MT, ENW, A, are Pedal Cycles, Construction and Use, Regulations 1983 PCUR. Public Passenger Vehicles, Act 1981, PPVA Road Traffic Act, 1984, RTA. Road Traffic Regulation Act, 1984, RTRA. Road Vehicles, Construction and Use, Regulations, 1986, CUR Roads, Scotland, Act 1984, R, S, A. Acts and Regulations, from 1988 onwards. Horses, Protective Headgear for Young Riders, Act 1990H, PHYR, A. Horses, Protective Headgear for Young Riders, Regulations 1992H, PHYR, are Motorcycles, Eye Protectors, Regulations 1999MC, EP, R. Motorcycles, Protective Helmets, Regulations 1998MC, PH, are Motorways Traffic, Scotland, Regulations 1995 MT, 
S, are motor vehicles, driving licenses, regulations 1999 MV, DL, R. Motor vehicles, wearing of seat belts, regulations 1993 MV, WSB, are motor vehicles, wearing of seat belts, amendment, regulations 2006 MV, WSB, A, R. Motor vehicles, wearing of seat belts by children in front seats, regulations, 1993 MV, WSB CFS, R. New Roads and Street Works Act 1991 NRSWA. Powers of Criminal Courts, Sentencing, Act 2000 PCC, S, a Police Reform Act, 2002 PRA. Prohibition of Smoking in Certain Premises, Scotland, Regulations 2006. Scottish SI 2006-no 90 TPSCP, S, R asterisk. Road Safety Act 2006, RSA Road Traffic Act 1988, RTA Road Traffic Act 1991 RTA. Road Traffic, New Drivers, Act 1995 RT, ND, A Road Traffic Offenders, Act 1988 RTOA. Road Vehicles, Display of Registration Marks, Regulations, 2001 RV, DRM, Are Road Vehicles Lighting Regulations 1989 RVLR. Road Vehicles, Registration and Licensing, Regulations 2002 RV, RNL, Are Smoke-Free, Exemptions and Vehicles, Regulations 2007 SI 2007-765, TSF, EV, Asterisk. Smoke-free premises, etc., Wales, Regulations, 2007 SI 2007-W787 TSFP, W, R Asterisk. Traffic Management Act, 2004, TMA. Traffic Signs Regulations and General Directions 2002 TSRGD Use of Invalid Carriages on Highways Regulations, 1988, UICHR Vehicle Excise and Registration Act 1994, VERA. Zebra, Pelican and Puffin Pedestrian Crossings Regulations and General Directions 1997, ZPPPCRGD. Asterisk Specific Legislation Applies to Smoking in Vehicles, which Constitute Workplaces. For information, visit http colon slash slash www.smokefreeengland.co.uk, http colon slash slash www.clearingtheairscotland.com, http colon slash slash www.smokingbanwales.co.uk. Road Users Requiring Extra Care Rules for Road Users Requiring Extra Care including pedestrians, motorcyclists, and cyclists, other road users, and other vehicles. Overview The road users most at risk from road traffic are pedestrians, in particular children, older adults, and disabled people, cyclists, horse riders, and motorcyclists. It is particularly important to be aware of children, older adults, and disabled people, and learner and inexperienced drivers and riders. In any interaction between road users, those who can cause the greatest harm have the greatest responsibility to reduce the danger or threat they pose to others. Pedestrians There is a risk of pedestrians, especially children, stepping unexpectedly into the road. You should drive with the safety of children in mind at a speed suitable for the conditions. Drive carefully and slowly when in crowded shopping streets, home zones and quiet lanes, see Rule 218, or residential areas. Driving past bus and tram stops, pedestrians may emerge suddenly into the road. Passing parked vehicles, especially ice cream vans, children are more interested in ice cream than traffic and may run into the road unexpectedly. Needing to cross a pavement, cycle lane, or cycle track, for example, to reach or leave a driveway or private access. Give way to pedestrians on the pavement and cyclists using a cycle lane or cycle track. Reversing into a side road, look all around the vehicle and give way to any pedestrians who may be crossing the road. Turning at road junctions, you should give way to pedestrians who are crossing or waiting to cross the road into which or from which you are turning. Going through road works or when passing roadside rescue and recovery vehicles, as there may be people working in or at the side of the road. 
The pavement is closed due to street repairs and pedestrians are directed to use the road. Approaching pedestrians on narrow rural roads without a footway or footpath. Always slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary, giving them plenty of room as you drive past. Approaching zebra and parallel crossings as you must give way to pedestrians and cyclists on the crossing, see Rule 195. Approaching pedestrians who have started to cross the road ahead of you. They have priority when crossing at a junction or side road, so you should give way, see Rule H2. Rule 206, Watch out for children in busy areas. Particularly vulnerable pedestrians. These include Children and older pedestrians who may not be able to judge your speed and could step into the road in front of you. At 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour, your vehicle will probably kill any pedestrians it hits. At 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, there is only a 1 in 20 chance of the pedestrian being killed. So kill your speed. Older pedestrians who may need more time to cross the road. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Do not hurry them by revving your engine or edging forward. People with disabilities. People with hearing impairments may not be aware of your vehicle approaching. Those with walking difficulties require more time. Blind or partially sighted people who may be carrying a white cane using a guide dog. They may not be able to see you approaching. Deafblind people who may be carrying a white cane with a red band or using a dog with a red and white harness. They may not see or hear instructions or signals. Near schools. Drive slowly and be particularly aware of young cyclists and pedestrians. In some places, there may be a flashing amber signal below the school warning sign which tells you that there may be children crossing the road ahead. Drive very slowly until you are clear of the area. Drive carefully and slowly when passing a stationary bus showing a school bus sign, download vehicle markings, as children may be getting on or off. You must stop when a school crossing patrol shows a stop for children sign, download traffic signs. Law RTRA Sect 28 Motorcyclists and Cyclists It is often difficult to see motorcyclists and cyclists, especially when they are waiting alongside you, coming up from behind coming out of or moving off from junctions, at roundabouts, overtaking you or filtering through traffic. Always look out for them before you emerge from a junction, they could be approaching faster than you think. Do not turn at a junction if to do so would cause the cyclist going straight ahead to stop or swerve, just as you would do with a motor vehicle. When turning right across a line of slow-moving or stationary traffic, Look out for and give way to cyclists or motorcyclists on the inside of the traffic you are crossing. Be especially careful when moving off, turning, and when changing direction or lane. Be sure to check mirrors and blind spots carefully. Rule 211. Look out for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions. Give motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and pedestrians walking in the road, for example, where there is no pavement, at least as much room as you would when overtaking a car, see rules 162 to 167. Drivers should take extra care and give more space when overtaking motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles, and pedestrians in bad weather, including high winds, and at night. If the rider looks over their shoulder, it could mean that they intend to pull out, turn right or change direction. Give them time and space to do so. on narrow sections of road, on quiet roads or streets, at road junctions and in slower-moving traffic, cyclists may sometimes ride in the center of the lane, rather than towards the side of the road. It can be safer for groups of cyclists to ride too abreast in these situations. Allow them to do so for their own safety, to ensure they can see and be seen. Cyclists are also advised to ride at least a door's width or one meter from parked cars for their own safety. On narrow sections of road, horse riders may ride in the center of the lane. Allow them to do so for their own safety to ensure they can see and be seen. 
motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles may suddenly need to avoid uneven road surfaces and obstacles such as drain covers or oily, wet or icy patches on the road. Give them plenty of room and pay particular attention to any sudden change of direction they may have to make. Other Road Users Animals When passing animals, drive slowly. Give them plenty of room and be ready to stop. Do not scare animals by sounding your horn, revving your engine, or accelerating rapidly once you have passed them. Look out for animals being led, driven, or ridden. On the road and take extra care. Keep your speed down at bends and on narrow country roads. If a road is blocked by a herd of animals, stop and switch off your engine until they have left the road. Watch out for animals on unfenced roads horse riders, and horse-drawn vehicles. Be particularly careful of horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles especially when approaching, overtaking, passing, or moving away. Always pass wide and slowly. When you see a horse on a road, you should slow down to a maximum of 10 miles per hour. Be patient, do not sound your horn or rev your engine. When safe to do so, pass wide and slow, allowing at least 2 meters of space. Feral or semi-feral ponies found in areas such as the New Forest, Exmoor, and Dartmoor require the same consideration as ridden horses when approaching or passing. Horse riders are often children, so take extra care and remember riders may ride in double file when escorting a young or inexperienced horse or rider. Look out for horse riders and horse drivers' signals and heed a request to slow down or stop. Take great care and treat all horses as a potential hazard. They can be unpredictable, despite the efforts of their rider slash driver. Remember there are three brains at work when you pass a horse, the riders, the drivers, and the horses. Do not forget horses are flight animals and can move incredibly quickly if startled. Older drivers. Their reactions may be slower than other drivers. Make allowance for this. Learners and inexperienced drivers. They may not be so skillful at anticipating and responding to events. Be particularly patient with learner drivers and young drivers. Drivers who have recently passed their test may display a new driver plate or sticker. See safety code for new drivers. Home zones and quiet lanes. These are places where people could be using the whole of the road for a range of activities such as children playing or for a community event. You should drive slowly and carefully and be prepared to stop to allow people extra time to make space for you to pass them in safety. Other Vehicles Emergency and Incident Support Vehicles You should look and Listen for ambulances, fire engines, police, doctors or other emergency vehicles using flashing blue, red or green lights and sirens or flashing headlights or highways agency traffic officer and incident support vehicles using flashing amber lights. When one approaches do not panic. Consider the route of such a vehicle and take appropriate action to let it pass, while complying with all traffic signs. If necessary, pull to the side of the road and stop, but try to avoid stopping before the brow of a hill, a bend or narrow section of road. Do not endanger yourself, other road users, or pedestrians, and avoid mounting the curb. Do not break harshly on approach to a junction or roundabout, as a following vehicle may not have the same view as you. Powered Vehicles Used by Disabled People These small vehicles travel at a maximum speed of 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour. On a dual carriageway, where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour. They must have a flashing amber beacon, but on other roads, you may not have that advance warning. See Rules 36 to 46, inclusive. Law RVLR Reg 17, 1, and 26. Large Vehicles. These may need extra road space to turn or to deal with a hazard that you are not able to see. If you are following a large vehicle, such as a bus or articulated lorry, be aware that the driver may not be able to see you in the mirrors. Be prepared to stop and wait if it needs room or time to turn. Large vehicles can block your view. 
Your ability to see and to plan ahead will be improved if you pull back to increase your separation distance. Be patient, as larger vehicles are subject to lower speed limits than cars and motorcycles. Many large vehicles may be fitted with speed limiting devices, which will restrict speed to 56 miles per hour, 90 kilometers per hour, even on a motorway. Buses, coaches, and trams. Give priority to these vehicles when you can do so safely, especially when they signal to pull away from stops. Look out for people getting off a bus or tram and crossing the road. Electric vehicles. Be careful of electric vehicles such as milk floats and trams. Trams move quickly but silently and cannot steer to avoid you. Vehicles with flashing amber beacons. These warn of a slow-moving or stationary vehicle, such as a traffic officer vehicle. Salt spreader, snow plow, or recovery vehicle, or abnormal loads, so approach with caution. On unrestricted dual carriageways, motor vehicles first used on or after January 1, 1947 with a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, or less, such as. Tractors, must, use a flashing amber beacon, also see Rule 220 above. Law RVLR 1989, Red 17. Driving in adverse weather conditions. Overview. You must use headlights when visibility is seriously reduced, generally when you cannot see for more than 100 meters, 328 feet. You may also use front or rear fog lights, but you must switch them off when visibility improves, see Rule 236. Law RVLR Regs 25 and 27. Wet weather. Wet weather. In wet weather, stopping distances will be at least double those required for stopping on dry roads. This is because your tires have less grip on the road. In wet weather, you should keep well back from the vehicle in front. This will increase your ability to see and plan ahead. If the steering becomes unresponsive, it probably means that water is preventing the tires from gripping the road. Ease off the accelerator and slow down gradually. The rain and spray from vehicles may make it difficult to see and be seen. Be aware of the dangers of spilt diesel that will make the surface very slippery. See NX6, Vehicle Maintenance, Safety, and Security. Take extra care around pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists, and horse riders. Icy and snowy weather. In winter check the local weather forecast for warnings of icy or snowy weather. Do not drive in these conditions unless your journey is essential. If it is, take great care and allow more time for your journey. Take an emergency kit of de-icer and ice scraper, torch, warm clothing and boots, first aid kit, jump leads, and a shovel, together with a warm drink and emergency food in case you get stuck or your vehicle breaks down. Before you set off. You must be able to see, so clear all snow and ice from all your windows. You must ensure that lights are clean and number plates are clearly visible and legible. Make sure the mirrors are clear and the windows are demi stead thoroughly. Remove all snow that might fall off into the path of other road users. Check your planned route is clear of delays and that no further snowfalls or severe weather are predicted. Laws CUR Reg 30, RVLR Reg 23, Verisect 43, and RV, DRM are Reg 11. When driving in icy or snowy weather, drive with care, even if the roads have been treated. Keep well back from the road user in front as stopping distances can be 10 times greater than on dry roads. Take care when overtaking vehicles spreading salt or other de-icer, particularly if you are riding a motorcycle or cycle. Watch out for snow pluffs, which may throw out snow on either side. Do not overtake them unless the lane you intend to use has been cleared. Be prepared for the road conditions to change over relatively. Short distances Listen to travel bulletins and take note of variable message signs that may provide information about weather, road, and traffic conditions ahead. Drive extremely carefully when the roads are icy. Avoid sudden actions as these could cause loss of control. You should Drive at a slow speed in as high a gear as possible, 
accelerate and brake very gently. Drive particularly slowly on bends, where loss of control is more likely. Brake progressively on the straight before you reach a bend. Having slowed down, steer smoothly round the bend, avoiding sudden actions. Check your grip on the road surface when there is snow or ice by choosing a safe place to brake gently. If the steering feels unresponsive, this may indicate ice and your vehicle losing its grip on the road. When traveling on ice, tires make virtually no noise. Windy weather High-sided vehicles are most affected by windy weather, but strong gusts can also blow a car, cyclist, motorcyclist, or horse rider off course. This can happen on open stretches of road exposed to strong crosswinds, or when passing bridges or gaps in hedges. In very windy weather, your vehicle may be affected by turbulence created by large vehicles. Motorcyclists are particularly affected, so keep well back from them when they are overtaking a high-sided vehicle. Fog Before entering fog check your mirrors, then slow down. If fog is shown on a sign, but the road is clear, be prepared for a bank of fog or drifting patchy fog ahead. Even if it seems to be clearing, you can suddenly find yourself in thick fog. When driving in fog you should Use your lights as required, see Rule 226. Keep a safe distance behind the vehicle in front. Rear lights can give a false sense of security. Be able to pull up well within the distance, you can see clearly. This is particularly important on motorways and dual carriageways, as vehicles are traveling faster. Use your windscreen wipers and demisters. Beware of other drivers not using headlights. Not accelerate to get away from a vehicle, which is too close behind you. Check your mirrors before you slow down. Then use your brakes so that your brake lights warn drivers behind you that you are slowing down. Stop in the correct position at a junction with limited visibility and listen for traffic. When you are sure it is safe to emerge, do so positively and do not hesitate in a position that puts you directly in the path of approaching vehicles. You must not use front or rear fog lights unless visibility is seriously reduced, see Rule 226, as they dazzle other road users and can obscure your brake lights. You must switch them off when visibility improves. Law RVLR Regs 25 and 27 Hot Weather Keep your vehicle well ventilated to avoid drowsiness. Be aware that the road surface may become soft or if it rains after a dry spell it may become slippery. These conditions could affect your steering and braking. If you are dazzled by bright sunlight, slow down, and if necessary, stop. Waiting and parking Waiting and parking You must not wait or park on yellow lines during the times of operation shown on nearby time plates, or zone entry signs if in a controlled parking zone, download traffic signs and road. Markings Double yellow lines indicate a prohibition of waiting at any time even if there are no upright signs. You must not wait or park or stop to set down and pick up passengers on school entrance markings, download road markings, when upright signs indicate a prohibition of stopping. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8 Parking Use off-street parking areas or bays marked out with white lines on the road as parking places, wherever possible. If you have to stop on the roadside, do not park facing against the traffic flow. Stop as close as you can to the side. Do not stop too close to a vehicle displaying a blue badge. Remember, the occupant may need more room to get in or out. You must switch off the engine, headlights, and fog lights. You must apply the handbrake before leaving the vehicle. You must ensure you do not hit anyone when you open your Door. Check for cyclists or other traffic by looking all around and using your mirrors. Where you are able to do so, you should open the door using your hand on the opposite side to the door you are opening, for example, use your left hand to open a door on your right hand side. This will make you turn your head to look over your shoulder. You are then more likely to avoid causing injury to cyclists or motorcyclists passing you on the road, or to people on the pavement. It is safer for your passengers, especially children, to get out of the vehicle on the side next to the curb. 
Put all valuables out of sight and make sure your vehicle is secure. Lock your vehicle. Before using a handheld device to help you to park, you must make sure it is safe to do so. Then, you should move the vehicle into the parking space in the safest way and by the shortest route possible. When you use a handheld device to help you to park, you must remain in control of the vehicle at all times. Do not use the handheld device for anything else while you are using it to help you park, and do not put anyone in danger. Use the handheld device according to the manufacturer's instructions. When using an electric vehicle charge point, you should park close to the charge point and avoid creating a trip hazard for pedestrians from trailing cables. Display a warning sign if you can. After using the charge point, you should return charging cables and connectors neatly to minimize the danger to pedestrians and avoid creating an obstacle for other road users. Rule 239, check before opening your door. You must not stop or park on the carriageway, an emergency area or a hard shoulder of a motorway, except in an emergency, see rules 270 and 271. A pedestrian crossing, including the area marked by the zigzag lines, see rule 191. A clearway. Taxi bays as indicated by upright signs and markings. An urban clearway within its hours of operation, except to pick up or set down passengers. A road marked with double white lines, even when a broken white line is on your side of the road, except to pick up or set down passengers, or to load or unload goods. A tram or cycle lane during its period of operation. A cycle track. Red lines, in the case of specially designated red routes, unless otherwise indicated by signs. Any vehicle may enter a bus lane to stop, load or unload where this is not prohibited, see Rule 140. Laws MT, ENW, are Reg 7 and 9, MT, S, are Reg 6 and 8, ZPPPCRGD. Regs 18 and 20, RTRA Sex 5, 6 and 8, TSRGD Regs 10, 26 and 27. RTA 1988 Sex, 21, 1, and 36. You must not park in parking spaces reserved for specific users, such as blue badge holders, residents, or motorcycles, unless entitled to do so. Laws CSDPA Sect 21 and RTRA Sects 5 and 8 You must not leave your vehicle or trailer in a dangerous position or where it causes any unnecessary obstruction of the road. Laws RTA 1988, Sect 22 and CUR Reg 103 do not stop or park. Near a school entrance. Anywhere you would prevent access for emergency services. At or near a bus or tram stop or taxi rank. On the approach to a level crossing slash tramway crossing. Opposite or within 10 meters, 32 feet, of a junction, except in an authorized parking space. Near the brow of a hill or hump bridge. Opposite a traffic island or, if this would cause an obstruction, another parked vehicle. Where you would force other traffic to enter a tram lane. Where the curb has been lowered to help wheelchair users and powered mobility vehicles. In front of an entrance to a property. On a bend. Where you would obstruct cyclists' use of cycle. Facilities except when forced to do so by stationary traffic. You must not park partially or wholly on the pavement in London, and should not do so elsewhere unless signs permit it. Parking on the pavement can obstruct and seriously inconvenience pedestrians, people in wheelchairs or with visual impairments, and people with prams or pushchairs. Law GL, GP, Asect 15 Controlled Parking Zones The zone entry signs indicate the times when the waiting restrictions within the zone are in force. Parking may be allowed in some places, at other times. Otherwise, parking will be within separately signed and marked bays. Goods Vehicles Vehicles with a maximum laden weight of over 7.5 tons, including any trailer, must not be parked on a verge, pavement or any land situated between carriageways, without police permission. The only exception is when parking is essential for loading and unloading, in which case the vehicle must not be.
left unattended. Law RTA 1988 Sect 19. Loading and Unloading. Do not load or unload where there are yellow markings on the curb and upright signs advise restrictions are in place, see pages 115 to 116. This may be permitted where parking is otherwise restricted. On red routes, specially marked and signed bays indicate where and when loading and unloading is permitted. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8. Parking at Night. You must not park on a road at night facing against the direction of the traffic flow unless in a recognized parking space. Laws CUR Reg 101 and RVLR Reg 24. All vehicles must display parking lights when parked on a road or a lay-by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour. Law RVLR Reg 24. Cars, goods vehicles not exceeding 1,525 kg unladen weight, invalid carriages, motorcycles and pedal cycles may be parked without lights on a road, or lay by, with a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 km per hour, or less if they are at least 10 meters, 32 feet, away from any junction, close to the curb and facing in the direction of the traffic flow. In a recognized parking place or lay by. Other vehicles and trailers, and all vehicles with projecting loads, must not be left on a road at night without lights. Laws RVLR Reg 24 and CUR Reg 82, 7. Parking in fog. It is especially dangerous to park on the road in fog. If it is unavoidable, leave your parking lights or side lights on. Parking on hills. If you park on a hill you should. Park close to the curb and apply the handbrake firmly. Select a forward gear and turn your steering wheel away from the curb when facing uphill. Select reverse gear and turn your steering wheel towards the curb when facing downhill. Use park if your car has an automatic gearbox. Decriminalized parking enforcement. Curb when facing downhill. DPE is becoming increasingly common as more authorities take on this role. The local traffic authority assumes responsibility for enforcing many parking contraventions in place of the police. Further details on DPE may be found at the following websites. Traffic Penalty Tribunal, Outside London. Parking and Traffic Appeals Service, Inside London. Motorways. Rules for motorways, including rules for signals, joining the motorway, driving on the motorway, lane discipline, overtaking, stopping, and leaving the motorway. A number of the rules for motorways also apply to other high-speed roads. A number of the rules for motorways also apply to other high-speed roads. Many other rules apply to motorway driving, either wholly or in part, rules 46, 57, 83 to 88, 89 to. 102, 103, to 126, 139, 144, 146 to 151, 160 to 161, 219, 221 to 222, 225, 226 to 237. 274 to 278, 282, 287 and 288 to 290. General. Prohibited vehicles. Motorways must not be used by pedestrians, holders of provisional motorcycle or car licenses, riders of motorcycles under 50 cubic centimeters, cyclists, horse riders, certain slow-moving vehicles, and those carrying oversized loads, except by special permission, agricultural vehicles, and powered wheelchairs slash powered mobility scooters, see Rules 36. 2. 46 Inclusive. Provisional car license holders must not drive on the motorway unless they are accompanied by a DVSA-approved driving instructor, ADI, and are driving a car displaying red L plates, or D plates in Wales, with dual controls. Laws HA 1986 16, 17 and SCH 4, MT, ENW, are regs 3, D, 4 and 11. MT, ENW, A, R, 
R, S, a sec 7, 8 and SCH 3, RTRA sec 17, 2, and, 3, and. MT, S, R reg 10. Traffic on motorways usually travels faster than on other roads, so you have less time to react. It is especially important to use your mirrors earlier and look much further ahead than you would on other roads. Motorway Signals Signs and signals, download light signals controlling traffic, are used to warn you of hazards ahead. For example, there may be an incident, fog, a spillage or road workers on the carriageway which you may not immediately be able to see. A single sign or signal can display advice, restrictions and warnings for all lanes. Lane-specific signs and signals can display advice, restrictions, and warnings that apply to individual lanes. Amber flashing lights. These signals warn of a hazard ahead. You should reduce your speed. Be prepared for the hazard. Only increase your speed when you pass a signal that is not flashing, or a sign displaying a national speed limit or the word END, and you are sure it is safe to do so. Red flashing light signals and a red X on a sign identify a closed lane in which people, stopped vehicles, or other hazards are. Present. You. Must follow the instructions on signs in advance of a closed lane to move safely to an open lane. Must not drive in a closed lane. A sign will inform you when the lane is no longer closed by displaying a speed limit or the word END. Be aware that there can be several hazards in a closed lane. Emergency services and traffic authorities use closed lanes to reach incidents and help people in need. Where the left lane is closed at an exit slip road, this means that the exit cannot be used. Where red flashing light signals and closure of all lanes are shown on a sign, the road is closed. You must not go beyond the sign in any lane or use the hard. Shoulder to avoid the road closure unless directed to do so by a police or traffic officer. Lane and road closures indicated by red flashing lights are enforced by the police. Joining the motorway. Joining the motorway. When you join the motorway, you will normally approach it from a road on the left, a slip road, or from an adjoining motorway. You should give priority to traffic already on the motorway. Check the traffic on the motorway and match your speed to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. Not cross solid white lines that separate lanes or use the hard shoulder. Stay on the slip road if it continues as an extra lane on the motorway. Remain in the left-hand lane long enough to adjust to the speed of traffic before considering overtaking. On the motorway. When you can see well ahead and the road conditions are good, you should drive at a steady cruising speed which you and your vehicle can handle safely and is within the speed limit, c. The speed limits table. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front and increase the gap on wet or icy roads, or in fog, c. Rules 126 and 235. You must not exceed. A speed limit displayed within a red circle on a sign. The maximum speed limit for the road and for your vehicle, see Rule 124. Speed limits are enforced by the police, see Rule 124. The monotony of driving on motorways and other high-speed roads can make you feel sleepy. To minimize the risk, follow the advice in Rule 91 about ensuring you are fit to drive and taking breaks. Service areas are located along motorways to allow you to take breaks and to obtain refreshments. Refreshment and rest facilities on the local road network may also be accessible from motorway exits. Law RTRA Sec 17, 86, 89 and SCH 6 Unless directed to do so by a police or traffic officer, you must not. Reverse along any part of a motorway, including slip roads, hard shoulders, and emergency areas. Cross the central reservation. Drive against the traffic flow. If you have missed your exit or have taken the wrong route, carry on to the next exit. Keep in the left lane unless overtaking. 
If you are overtaking, you should return to the left lane when it is safe to do so. See also rules 267 and 268. Be aware of emergency services, traffic officers, recovery workers, and other people or vehicles stopped on the hard shoulder or in an emergency area. If you are driving in the left lane, and it is safe. To do so, you should move into the adjacent lane to create more space between your vehicle and the people and stopped vehicles. Lane Discipline the right-hand lane of a motorway with three or more. Lanes must not be used, except in prescribed circumstances, if you are driving. Any vehicle drawing a trailer. A goods vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 3.5 tons, but not exceeding 7.5 tons, which is required to be fitted with a speed limiter. A goods vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 7.5 tons. A passenger vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 7.5 tons constructed or adapted to carry more than 8 seated passengers in addition to the driver. A passenger vehicle with a maximum laden weight not exceeding 7.5 tons which is constructed or adapted to carry more than 8 seated passengers in addition to the driver, which is required to be fitted with a speed limiter. Laws MT, ENW are Reg 12, MT, ENW, AR, 2004, MT, S, are Reg 11, and MT, S, AR, 2004. Approaching a junction. Look well ahead for signals or signs. Direction signs may be placed over the road. If you need to change lanes, do so in good time. At some junctions a lane may lead directly off the motorway. Only get in that lane if you wish to go in the direction indicated on the overhead signs. Overtaking. Do not overtake unless you are sure it is safe and legal to do so. Overtake only on the right. You should. Check your mirrors. Take time to judge the speeds correctly. Make sure that the lane you will be joining is sufficiently clear ahead and behind. Take a quick sideways glance into the blind spot area to verify the position of a vehicle that may have disappeared from your view in the mirror. Remember that traffic may be coming up behind you very quickly. Check all your mirrors carefully. Look out for motorcyclists. When it is safe to do so, signal in plenty of time, then move out. Ensure you do not cut in on the vehicle you have overtaken. Be especially careful at night and in poor visibility when it is harder to judge speed and distance. Do not overtake on the left or move to a lane on your left to overtake. In congested conditions, where adjacent lanes of traffic are moving at similar speeds, traffic in left-hand lanes may sometimes be moving faster than traffic to the right. In these conditions you may keep up with the traffic in your lane even if this means passing traffic in the lane to your right. Do not weave in and out of lanes to overtake. Hard shoulder, where present. You must not use a hard shoulder except in an emergency or if directed to do so by the police, traffic officers, or a traffic sign. Hard shoulder, where used as an extra lane. The hard shoulder is used as an extra lane on some motorways during periods of congestion. A red X or blank sign above the hard shoulder means that you must not use the hard shoulder except in an emergency. You can only use the hard shoulder as an extra lane when a speed limit is shown above the hard shoulder. Where the hard shoulder is being used as an extra lane, emergency areas are provided for use in an emergency, see Rule 270. Laws MT, ENW, are Regs 5, 5A and 9, MT. S, are regs 4 and 8. Stopping. Emergency areas are located along motorways with no hard shoulder or where the hard shoulder can be used as an extra lane, see Rule 269, and must only be used in an emergency. They are marked by blue signs with an orange SOS telephone symbol and may have orange surfacing. Follow the requirements and advice in. Rule 277 if your vehicle develops a problem on the motorway. Rule 278 to rejoin the carriageway from an emergency area. Laws MT, ENW, are regs 5A, 7, 9, 10 and 16, MT, S, 
are Reg 6, 1, 8, 9 and 14. PRA 2002 Sect 41 and Sked 5, 8, and RTA 1988 Secs 35 and 163 as. Amended by TMA 2004, Sect 6. You must not stop on any carriageway, emergency area, hard shoulder, slip road, central reservation, or verge except in an emergency, or when told to do so by the police, traffic officers, an emergency sign or by red flashing light signals. Do not stop on any part of a motorway to make or receive mobile telephone calls, except in an emergency. Laws RTRA Sect 17 and MT, ENW. Our Reg 15. You must not pick up or set down anyone, or walk on a motorway, except in an emergency. Leaving the motorway. Unless signs indicate that a lane leads directly off the motorway, you will normally leave the motorway by a slip road on your left. You should. Watch for the signs, letting you know you are getting near your exit. Move into the left-hand lane well before reaching your exit. Signal left in good time and reduce your speed on the slip road as necessary. On leaving the motorway or using a link road between motorways, your speed may be higher than you realize 50 miles per hour may feel like 30 miles per hour. Check your speedometer and adjust your speed accordingly. Some slip roads and link roads have sharp bends, so you will need to slow down. Breakdowns and Incidents Place of Relative Safety if you need to stop your vehicle in the event of a breakdown or incident, try to stop in a place of relative safety. A place of relative safety is where you, your passengers and your vehicle are less likely to be at risk from moving traffic. The safest place to stop is a location which is designed for parking. On motorways and other high-speed roads, the safest place to stop is a service area. Other places of relative safety include Laybice Emergency Areas, See Rule 270 Hard Shoulders, See Rule 269 Be aware that hard shoulders provide less protection than other places of relative safety because they are so close to high-speed traffic. You and your passengers should, where possible, keep well away from your vehicle and moving traffic. Otherwise moving traffic could collide with your vehicle, forcing it into you and your passengers. Breakdowns if your vehicle breaks down, think first of all other road users and get your vehicle off the road if possible. Warn other traffic by using your hazard warning lights if your vehicle is causing an obstruction. Help other road users see you by wearing light-colored or fluorescent clothing in daylight and reflective clothing at night or in poor visibility. Put a warning triangle on the road at least 45 meters, 147 feet behind your broken-down vehicle on the same side of the road, or use other permitted warning devices if you have them. Always take great care when placing or retrieving them, but never use them on motorways. If possible, keep your side lights on if it is dark or visibility is poor. Do not stand, or let anybody else stand, between your vehicle and oncoming traffic. At night or in poor visibility, do not stand where you will prevent other road users seeing your lights. Laws MT, ENW, are Reg 14 and MT, S, are Reg 12. Additional Rules for Motorways If your vehicle develops a problem, leave the carriageway at the next exit or pull into a service area if possible, see Rule 275 for places of relative safety. If you cannot, you should. Go left. Move into the left lane. Pull into an emergency area or onto a hard shoulder if you can. Stop as far to the left as possible, leaving space to exit your vehicle and with your wheels turn to the left. If you can, stop just beyond an emergency telephone. Switch your hazard warning lights on. If it's dark or visibility is poor, use side lights. Get safe. Exit your vehicle by the side furthest from traffic, if it is safe and possible to do so and ensure passengers do the same. Put on high-visibility clothing if you have it and it is within easy reach. Get behind a safety barrier where there is one, but be aware of any unseen hazards such as sudden drops, uneven ground or debris. 
Do not stand in a place where your vehicle could be forced into you if moving traffic collides with it. Do not return to your vehicle even if it's raining, cold or dark. Remain alert and aware of vehicles or debris coming towards you. Keep passengers away from the carriageway and children under control. Do not attempt repairs on your vehicle. Do not place a warning triangle on the carriageway. Animals must be kept in the vehicle or, in an emergency, under. Control on the verge. Rule 277. Keep well away from your vehicle and moving traffic. Get help. Use the free emergency telephone to obtain advice and assistance. Contact a breakdown recovery service. Always face the traffic when you speak to remain aware of. Vehicles or debris coming towards you. Inform them if you are a vulnerable motorist, such as disabled, older, or traveling alone. Wait well away from your vehicle and moving traffic, behind the safety barrier where there is one. If you are unable to exit your vehicle or if you have not stopped near a free emergency telephone, call 999 immediately and ask for the police. Alternatively, press your SOS button if your vehicle has one and ask for the police. Communicating your location. How to identify your location to the emergency services. E-call. Press the SOS button if your vehicle has one. App. Use a mobile telephone mapping application. Marker post or driver location sign. Quote the numbers and letters on marker posts or driver location signs, which are located along the edge of the road. To rejoin the carriageway after a breakdown from a hard shoulder, build up speed, indicate and watch for a safe gap in the traffic. Be aware that vehicles, obstructions, or debris may be present on the hard shoulder. An emergency area, you must use the emergency telephone provided and follow the operator's advice for exiting the emergency area. A lane may need to be closed so that you can rejoin the carriageway safely. Rule 278, Emergency Area Information Sign Disabled Drivers If you have a disability that prevents you from following the above advice in Rules 277 and 278, you should Switch on your hazard warning lights Stay in your vehicle and keep your seat belt on. Call 999 immediately and ask for the police. Alternatively, press your SOS button if your vehicle has one and ask for the police. If you are deaf, hard of hearing or speech impaired, it is recommended that you register for the 999 text service, emergencysms.net, before making a journey. Obstructions if anything falls from a vehicle onto a motorway or other high-speed road, do not remove the obstruction yourself. Stop in a place of relative safety, see Rule 275, and call the emergency services on 999. On other roads, you should only remove obstructions if it is safe to do so. Incidents Warning signs or flashing lights if you see emergency or incident support vehicles displaying flashing lights in the distance, be aware there may be an incident ahead, see Rule 219. You should slow down and be prepared to move safely into another lane or stop. The emergency services, traffic officers, and recovery workers may be required to work in the carriageway, for example, dealing with debris, collisions, or conducting rolling roadblocks. You must follow any directions given by police or traffic officers as to whether you can safely pass the incident or obstruction. Laws RTA 1988, Sex 35 and 163, and as amended by TMA 2004, Sec 6. When passing the scene of an incident, remain alert for hazards, such as debris or slow-moving vehicles, and do not slow down unnecessarily, for example, if an incident is on the other side of a dual carriageway. You should focus on the road ahead when passing an incident because a lack of attention may cause a further incident, collision, or congestion. See also Rule 283, below. If you are involved in an incident or collision, or stop to give assistance. If possible, stop in a place of relative safety. See Rule 275. Use your hazard warning lights to warn other traffic.
put on high-visibility clothing if you have it. Ask drivers to switch off their engines. Ask drivers and passengers to stop smoking. Contact the emergency services on 999 and provide full details of the incident location and any casualties. Use an emergency telephone, a mobile telephone, or press the SOS button if your vehicle has one. See Rule 277 on how to identify your location on a motorway or other high-speed road. Move uninjured people away from the vehicles to a place of relative safety. See Rule 275. Do not move injured people from their vehicles unless they are in immediate danger. Do not remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it is essential and you are trained to do so. Be prepared to give first aid, see Annex 7 and useful websites. Stay at the scene until the emergency services arrive. Be prepared to exchange details, see Rule 286. If you are involved in any other medical emergency, you should contact the emergency services in the same way. Incidents involving dangerous goods Vehicles carrying dangerous goods and packages will be marked with plain orange reflective plates. Road tankers and vehicles carrying tank containers of dangerous goods will have hazard warning plates, download vehicle markings. If an incident involves a vehicle containing dangerous goods, follow the advice in Rule 283 and, in particular, switch off engines and do not smoke. Keep well away from the vehicle and do not be tempted to try to rescue casualties as you yourself could become one. Call the emergency services and give as much information as possible about the labels and markings on the vehicle. Do not use a mobile phone close to a vehicle carrying flammable loads. Documentation Smoking If you are involved in a collision which causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property, you must Stop if possible, stop in a place of relative safety, see Rule 275. Give your own and the vehicle owner's name and address, and the registration number of the vehicle, to anyone having reasonable grounds for requiring them. If you do not give your name and address at the time of the collision, report it to the police as soon as reasonably practicable, and in any case within 24 hours. Law RTA 1988, Sect 170 if another person is injured and you do not produce your insurance certificate at the time of the crash to a police officer or to anyone having reasonable grounds to request it, you must report it to the police as soon as possible and in any case within 24 hours. Produce your insurance certificate for the police within seven days. Law RTA 1988, Sect 170 Roadworks, Level Crossings, and Tramways Roadworks Rules for roadworks, including on motorways and other high-speed roads, level crossings, and tramways. When the roadworks ahead sign is displayed, take extra care and look for additional signs providing more specific instructions. Observe all signs, they are there for your safety and the safety of roadworkers. You must not exceed any temporary maximum speed limit. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front, see Rule 126. Use your mirrors and get into the correct lane for your vehicle in good time and as signs direct. Do not switch lanes to overtake queuing traffic. Take extra care near cyclists and motorcyclists as they are vulnerable to skidding on grit, mud or other debris at roadworks. Where lanes are restricted due to roadworks, merge and turn, see Rule 134. Do not drive through an area marked off by traffic cones. Watch out for vehicles entering or leaving the works area. Where vehicles are traveling in the road and are displaying amber warning lights, leave extra space and expect them to slow or turn into a works area. Concentrate on the road ahead, not the road works. Bear in mind that the road ahead may be obstructed by the works or by slow-moving or stationary traffic. Law RTRA Sect 16 Additional Rules for High-Speed Roads Take special care on motorways and other high-speed dual carriageways. Lanes may be close to traffic and a lower speed limit may apply. Works vehicles may be used to close lanes or carriageways for repairs. Where large keep-left or keep-right signs are displayed on the back, 
you must move over and pass the works vehicle on the side indicated and not return to the closed lane until you can see it is safe to do so. Where a vehicle displays the sign, Convoy Vehicle NO Overtaking, you must not pass the vehicle. A flashing light arrow or red X may also be used to make the works vehicle more visible from a distance and give earlier warning to drivers. Roadworks may contain features that require extra care. Narrow lanes. Lanes may be narrower than normal and will be marked by studs or temporary road markings. Keep a safe distance, see Rule 126, from the vehicle in front and make sure you can clearly see the edges of the lane ahead. Contraflow systems. These mean that you may be traveling in a narrower lane than normal and with no permanent barrier between you and oncoming traffic. At the start and finish of contraflows, you should slow down and increase the distance to the vehicle in front because changes in the camber of the road may affect vehicle stability. Breakdown advice. If your vehicle breaks down in road works, follow rules 275, 277, and 278, but be aware that areas marked off by cones contain significant hazards. Where available, you should move your vehicle into a signed road works refuge location. Signs indicate where dedicated recovery services are provided. Level crossings. A level crossing is where a road crosses a railway or tramway line. Approach and cross it with care. Never drive onto a crossing until the road is clear on the other side and do not get too close to the car in front. Never stop or park on or near a crossing. Overhead electric lines. It is dangerous to touch overhead electric lines. You must obey the safe height warning road signs and you should not continue. Forward onto the railway if your vehicle touches any height barrier or bells. The clearance available is usually 5 meters, 16 feet 6 inches, but may be lower. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36, TSRGD, 2002 Reg 17, 5. Controlled crossings. Most crossings have traffic light signals with a steady amber light, twin flashing red stop lights download light signals controlling traffic and traffic signs, and an audible alarm for pedestrians. They may have full, half or no barriers. You must always obey the flashing red stop lights. You must stop behind the white line across the road. Keep going if you have already crossed the white line when the amber light comes on. Do not reverse onto or over a controlled crossing. You must wait if a train goes by and the red lights continue to flash. This means another train will be passing soon. Only cross when the lights go off and barriers open. Never zigzag around half barriers, they lower automatically because a train is approaching. At crossings where there are no barriers, a train is approaching when the lights show. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 40 Railway telephones. If you are driving a large or slow-moving vehicle, a long, low vehicle with a risk of grounding or hurting animals, a train could arrive before you are clear of the crossing. You must obey any sign instructing you to use the railway telephone to obtain permission to cross. You must also telephone when clear of the crossing if requested to do so. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 16, 1. Or hurting animals, a train could arrive before you are clear of the crossing. Crossings without traffic lights. Vehicles should stop and wait at the barrier or gate when it begins to close and not cross until the barrier or gate opens. User-operated gates or barriers. Some crossings have stop signs and small red and green lights. You must not cross when the red light is showing, only cross if the green light is on. If crossing with a vehicle, you should Open the gates or barriers on both sides of the crossing. Check that the green light is still on and cross quickly. Close the gates or barriers when you are clear of the crossing. Laws RTA 1988 Sect 36 and TSRGD Regs 10 and 52, 2 if there are no lights, follow the procedure in Rule 295. Stop, look both ways and listen before you cross. 
If there is a railway telephone, always use it to contact the signal operator to make sure it is safe to cross. Inform the signal operator again when you are clear of the crossing. Open crossings. These have no gates, barriers, attendant or traffic lights, but will have a giveaway sign. You should look both ways, listen and make sure there is no train coming before you cross. Incidents and breakdowns. If your vehicle breaks down, or if you have an incident on a crossing you should. Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing immediately. Use a railway telephone if available to tell the signal operator. Follow the instructions you are given. Move the vehicle clear of the crossing if there is time before a train arrives. If the alarm sounds or the amber light comes on, leave the vehicle and get clear of the crossing immediately. Tramways You must not enter a road, lane, or other route reserved for trams. Take extra care where trams run along the road. You should avoid driving directly on top of the rails and should take care where trams leave the main carriageway to enter the reserved route to ensure you do not follow them. The width taken up by trams is often shown by tram lanes marked by white lines, yellow dots, or by a different type of road surface. Diamond-shaped signs and white light signals give instructions to tram drivers only. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8 Take extra care where the track crosses from one side of the road to the other and where the road narrows and the tracks come close to the curb. Tram drivers usually have their own traffic signals and may be permitted to move when you are not. Always give way to trams. Do not try to race or overtake them or pass them on the inside, unless they are at tram stops or stopped by tram signals and there is a designated tram lane for you to pass. You must not park your vehicle where it would get in the way of trams or where it would force other drivers to do so. Do not stop on any part of a tram track, except in a designated bay where this has been provided alongside and clear of the track. When doing so, ensure that all parts of your vehicle are outside the delineated tram path. Remember that a tram cannot steer round an obstruction. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8 Tram stops. Where the tram stops at a platform, either in the middle or at the side of the road, you must follow the route shown by the road signs and markings. At stops without platforms, you must not drive between a tram and the left-hand curb when a tram has stopped to pick up passengers. If there is no alternative route signed, do not overtake the tram wait until it moves off. Law RTRA Sex 5 and 8 Look out for pedestrians, especially children, running to catch a tram approaching a stop. Always give priority to trams, especially when they signal to pull away from stops, unless it would be unsafe to do so. Remember that they may be carrying large numbers of standing passengers who could be injured if the tram had to make an emergency stop. Look out for people getting off a bus or tram and crossing the road. All road users, but particularly cyclists and motorcyclists, should take extra care when driving or riding close to or crossing the tracks, especially if the rails are wet. You should take particular care when crossing the rails at shallow angles, on bends, and at junctions. It is safest to cross the tracks directly at right angles. Other road users should be aware that cyclists and motorcyclists may need more space to cross the tracks safely. Overhead electric lines. Tramway overhead wires are normally 5.8 meters above any carriageway, but can be lower. You should Ensure that you have sufficient clearance between the wire and your vehicle, including any load you are carrying, before driving under an overhead wire. Drivers of vehicles with extending cranes, booms, tipping apparatus, or other types of variable height equipment should ensure that the equipment is fully lowered. Where overhead wires are set lower than 5.8 meters, these will be indicated by height clearance markings similar to low bridge signs. The height clearances on these plates should be carefully noted and observed. If you are in any doubt as to whether your vehicle will pass safely under the wires, you should always contact the local police or the tramway operator. Never take a chance as this can be extremely hazardous. Direction Signs on Roads and Motorways the Highway Code leaflet direction signs lists all the signs used on British motorways, roads, and local roads. 
Download Direction Signs Information Signs The Highway Code Leaflet Information Signs lists all the information signs on UK roads and motorways. These tell road users about upcoming junctions, lane restrictions, special zones, and merging road lanes. Download Information Signs Light Signals Controlling Traffic Download guidance on traffic light, motorway, and lane control signals from the Highway Code. Download light signals controlling traffic. Road markings. Download illustrated guidance on road markings from the highway code. Download road markings. Road signs giving orders. The highway code leaflet signs giving orders lists all the signs that you must obey on roads in the UK. Download signs giving orders. Roadwork signs. Download a highway code leaflet with guidance on roadwork signs. Download roadwork signs. Signals by authorized persons. You must obey signals given by police officers, traffic officers, and traffic wardens. Read guidance from the highway code on the signals used on UK roads and motorways. Download signals by authorized persons. Signals to other road users. Download guidance from the Highway Code about all the signals you can make to warn and inform other road users, including pedestrians. Download signals to other road users. Traffic Signs The Highway Code's Traffic Signs is for all new drivers and riders who need to pass the driving theory test. It shows the most commonly used traffic signs on British roads and motorways. Download Traffic Signs Know Your Traffic Signs Know Your Traffic Signs is a guide for all road users, new and experienced. It illustrates and explains all the important traffic signs, signals, and road markings for drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. Download Know Your Traffic Signs Vehicle Markings Vehicle markings help with visibility and give information about dangerous or hazardous loads. Read a list of all vehicle markings used on UK vehicles from the Highway Code. Download Vehicle Markings Warning Signs on the Road The Highway Code Leaflet Warning Signs lists all the warning signs used on British roads that alert drivers, riders, and cyclists to road conditions, junctions, and dangers on the road. Download Warning Signs Annexes Rules for Cyclists You and Your Bicycle Make sure that you feel confident of your ability to ride safely on the road. Be sure that you have the right size and type of cycle for your comfort and safety. The lights and reflectors are kept clean and in good working order. The tires are in good condition and inflated to the pressure shown on the tire. The wheels spin freely. The gears are working correctly. The chain is properly adjusted and oiled. The saddle and handlebars are adjusted to the correct height. You should fit a bell to your cycle. You must Ensure your brakes are efficient. Have white front and red rear lights lit when cycling at night. Laws PCUR Reg 6 and 10 and RVLR Reg 18 Cycle Training If you are an inexperienced cyclist or have not ridden for a while, consider taking a cycle training course. Some councils offer national standard cycle training, such as bikeability and in certain areas, this is free of charge. It can help build up your skills and confidence. There are three levels to bikeability, starting with the basics of balancing, stopping, and starting safely, through to handling complex and busy junctions. You will also learn about traffic signs and the rules of the road, planning routes, safe road positioning and signaling, particularly at junctions, and basic cycle maintenance. For more information, see www.bikeability.org.uk and www.cycling.scot. Rules for Motorcyclists Motorcycle License Requirements If you have a provisional motorcycle license, you must satisfactorily complete a compulsory basic training, CBT, course. You can then ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters with a power output not exceeding 11 kilowatts on the public road, with L plates, 
in whales either D plates, L plates, or both can be used, for up to two years. Under direct access, you can practice on a motorcycle that exceeds 125 cubic centimeters, provided that you meet the minimum age for the category concerned. You're accompanied at all times by a qualified approved trainer who is on another motorcycle and in radio contact with you. Fluorescent or reflective safety clothing is worn during supervision. Red L plates, D plates and whales are fitted and provisional license restrictions followed. To obtain your full motorcycle license, you must pass a motorcycle theory test and then a practical test. Law MV, DL, are regs 16 and 68. A one motorcycle license, at age 17 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle without sidecar of between 120 and 125 cubic centimeters. If you pass, you may ride a motorcycle up to 125 cubic centimeters, with power output up to 11. KW, or a motor tricycle with power not exceeding 15 kilowatts. A two-motorcycle license, at age 19 or over, you take a test on a motorcycle without sidecar of at least 395 cubic centimeters, with a power output of at least 25 kilowatts, but not exceeding 35 kilowatts. If you pass, you may ride any motorcycle not exceeding 35 kilowatts and with a power-to-weight ratio not exceeding 0.2 kilowatts per kilogram. Full and motorcycle license, test taken on a motorcycle without sidecar, of at least 595 cubic centimeters and an engine power of at least 40 kilowatts. This gives you full access to all motorcycles and motor tricycles. You obtain a Category A license by taking progressive access from age 21 or under the direct access scheme from age 24. Category A under progressive access, you can take a Category A practical test at age 21 if you already have an A2 license that you've held for a minimum of two years. You don't need to take another theory test or hold a CBT certificate. Category A under direct access, this is for riders age 24 or over. To obtain a Category A license you must Successfully complete a CBT course Pass the motorcycle theory test Pass the practical motorcycle test Passing the practical test on a motorcycle of at least 40 kW, 53.6 brake horsepower, gives immediate access to all sizes of motorcycle. You must not carry a pillion passenger or pull a trailer until you have passed your test. Also see Rule 253 Covering Vehicles Prohibited from Motorways. Law MV, DL, R Reg 16. Moped License Requirements. A moped must have an engine capacity not exceeding 50 cubic centimeters, not weigh more than 250 kilograms and be designed to have a maximum speed not exceeding 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. Before June 2003, a license allowed the riding of mopeds up to 50 km per hour. To ride a moped, learners must be 16 or over, have a provisional moped license, complete CBT training. You must first pass the theory test for motorcycles and then the moped practical test to obtain your full moped license. If you passed your car driving test before February 1, 2001, you are qualified to ride a moped without L plates and or D plates in Wales, although it is recommended that you complete CBT before riding on the road. If you passed your car driving test after this date, you must complete CBT before riding a moped on the road. Laws RTA 1988 Sex 97 E and 101 and MV DL are regs 38 4 and 43. Rules for Drivers and Motorcyclists Motor Vehicle Documentation and Learner Driver Requirements Documents Driving License You must have a valid driving license for the category of motor vehicle you are driving. You must inform the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, DVLA, if you change your name and or address. Law RTA 1988 Sex 87 and 99, 4. 
holders of non-European community licenses who are now resident in the UK may only drive on that license for a maximum of 12 months from the date they become resident in this country. To ensure continuous driving entitlement. A British provisional license should be obtained and a driving test passed before the 12-month period elapses, or in the case of a driver who holds a license from a country which has been designated in law for license exchange. Purposes, the driver should exchange the license for a British one. MOT. Cars and motorcycles must normally pass an MOT test three years from the date of the first registration and every year after that. You must not drive a motor vehicle without an MOT certificate when it should have one. Exceptionally, you may drive to a prearranged test appointment or to a garage for repairs required for the test. Driving an unroadworthy motor vehicle may invalidate your insurance. From May 20, 2018, cars, vans, motorcycles and other light passenger vehicles manufactured or first registered over 40 years ago will be exempt from the MOT test unless the vehicle has been substantially changed within the previous 30 years. Guidance on what counts as a substantial change can be found at www.gov.uk slash historic vehicles. If a vehicle that's currently exempt from the MOT test is substantially changed, the vehicle keeper cannot continue to claim an exemption from the MOT test. Law RTA 1988 Sex 45, 47, 49, and 53 Insurance to use a motor vehicle on the road, you must have a valid insurance policy. This must at least cover you for injury or damage to a third party while using that motor vehicle. Before driving any motor vehicle, make sure that it has this cover for your use or that your own insurance provides adequate cover. You must not drive a motor vehicle without insurance. Also, be aware that even if a road traffic incident is not your fault, you may still be held liable by insurance companies. Law RTA 1988 Sect 143 Uninsured drivers can now be automatically detected by roadside cameras. Further to the penalties for uninsured driving, see Penalty Table, an offender's vehicle can now be seized by the police, taken away and crushed. Law RTA 1988 Secs 165A and 165B the types of cover available are indicated below. Third-party insurance, this is often the cheapest form of insurance, and is the minimum cover required by law. It covers anyone you might injure or whose property you might damage. It does not cover damage to your own motor vehicle or injury to yourself. Third-party, fire and theft insurance similar to third-party, but also covers you against your motor vehicle being stolen or damaged by fire. Comprehensive insurance, this is the most expensive, but the best insurance. Apart from covering other persons and property against injury or damage, it also covers damage to your own motor vehicle, up to the market value of that vehicle, and personal injury to yourself. Registration Certificate Registration certificates, also called harmonized registration certificates, are issued for all motor vehicles used on the road, describing them, make, model, etc., and giving details of the registered keeper. You must notify the driver and vehicle licensing agency in Swansea as soon as possible when you buy or sell a motor vehicle, or if you change your name or address. For registration certificates issued after March 27, 1997, the buyer and seller are responsible for completing the registration certificates. The seller is responsible for forwarding them to DVLA. The procedures are explained on the back of the registration certificates. Law RV, RNL, are Regs 21, 22, 23, and 24. Vehicle Excise Duty, VD. Vehicle excise duty must be paid on all motor vehicles used or kept on public roads. Law Vera Sex 29 and 33 Statutory Off-Road Notification, SORN This is a notification to the DVLA that a motor vehicle is not being used on the road. If you are the vehicle keeper and want to keep a motor vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must declare SORN it is an offense not to do so. You then won't have to pay any road tax for that vehicle for a period of 12 months. 
You need to send a further declaration after that period if the vehicle is still off the public road. The SORN will end if you sell the vehicle and the new owner will become immediately responsible. If your vehicle is unused or off the road, it must have either a SORN declaration or valid insurance. Law RV, RL, R2002, Reg 26, Sked 4. Production of Documents. You must be able to produce your driving license and counterpart, a valid insurance certificate and, if appropriate, a valid MOT certificate, when requested by a police officer. If you cannot do this, you may be asked to take them to a police station within seven days. Law RTA 1988 Sex 164 and 165 Learner Drivers Learners driving a car must hold a valid provisional license. They must be supervised by someone at least 21 years old who holds a full EC-EA license for that type of car, automatic or manual, and has held one for at least three years. Laws MV, DL, R Reg 16 and RTA 1988, Sect 87. Vehicles. Any vehicle driven by a learner must display red L plates. In Wales, either red D plates, red L plates, or both, can be used. Plates must conform to legal specifications and must be clearly visible to others from in front of the vehicle and from behind. Plates should be removed or covered when not being driven by a learner except on driving school vehicles. Law MV, DL, R Reg 16 and Sked 4. You must pass the theory test, if one is required, and then a practical driving test for the category of vehicle you wish to drive before driving unaccompanied. Law MV, DL, R Reg 40. Using the road. The road user and the law. The following list can be found abbreviated throughout the code. It is not intended to be a comprehensive guide, but a guide to some of the important points of law. For the precise wording of the law, please refer to the various acts and regulations, as amended, indicated in the code. Abbreviations are listed below. Most of the provisions apply on all roads throughout Great Britain, although there are some exceptions. The definition of a road in England and Wales is any highway and any other road to which the public has access and includes bridges over which a road passes, RTA 1988 Sect 192, 1. In Scotland, there is a similar definition which is extended to include any way over which the public have a right of passage, R.S., in 1984 Sect 151, 1. It is important to note that references to road therefore generally include footpaths, bridleways, and cycle tracks, and many roadways and driveways on private land, including many car parks. In most cases, the law will apply to them and there may be additional rules for particular paths or ways. Some serious driving offenses, including drink driving offenses, also apply to all public places, for example, public car parks. The reference to emergency area in the code is an emergency refuge. Area as defined in the Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Regulations 1982 as amended by the Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Amendment, England, Regulations 2015. Acts and regulations are available as enacted or as amended at www.legislation.gov.uk and are available in their original print format from the Stationery Office. Acts and Regulations, prior to 1988. Chronically Sick and Disabled Persons Act 1970 CSDPA Functions of Traffic Wardens Order 1970 FTWO Greater London, General Powers, Act 1974 GL, GP, A Highway Act 1835 or 1980, as indicated, H.A. Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Regulations 1982 MT, ENW. Our Motorways Traffic, England and Wales, Amended Regulations MT, ENW, A, R. Pedal Cycles, Construction and Use, Regulations, 1983, PCUR Public Passenger Vehicles, Act 1981, PPVA. Road Traffic Act, 1984, RTA. Road Traffic Regulation Act, 1984, RTRA. Road Vehicles, Construction and Use, Regulations, 1986 CUR Roads, Scotland, Act 1984, R.
S. A. Acts and Regulations, from 1988 onwards. Horses, Protective Headgear for Young Riders, Act 1998, PHYR, A. Horses, Protective Headgear for Young Riders, Regulations 1992-H, PHYR, are motorcycles, eye protectors, Regulations 1999-MC, EP, R. Motorcycles, Protective Helmets, Regulations 1998-MC, PH, are motorways traffic, Scotland, Regulations 1995-MT, S, R. Motor Vehicles, Driving Licenses, Regulations 1999 MV, DL, are motor vehicles, wearing of seat belts, Regulations 1993 MV, WSB, R. Motor Vehicles, Wearing of Seat Belts, Amendment, Regulations, 2006 MV, WSB, A, R. Motor Vehicles, Wearing of Seat Belts by Children in Front Seats, Regulations, 1993 MV, WSBCFS, R. New Roads and Street Works Act 1991 NRSWA. Powers of Criminal Courts, Sentencing, Act 2000 PCC, S, A Police Reform Act, 2002 PRA. Prohibition of Smoking in Certain Premises, Scotland, Regulations 2006. Scottish SI 2006 No 90 TPSCP, S, R Asterisk. Restricted Roads, 20 miles per hour speed limit, Order 2022, SI 2022-800, Road Safety Act 2006 RSA. Road Traffic Act, 1988, RTA Road Traffic Act, 1991 RTA. Road Traffic, New Drivers, Act 1995 RT, and D, A Road Traffic Offenders, Act 1988 RTOA. Road Vehicles, Display of Registration Marks, Regulations, 2001 RV, DRM, are Road Vehicles Lighting Regulations 1989 RVLR. Road Vehicles, Registration and Licensing, Regulations, 2002 RV, RNL, R. Smoke-Free, Exemptions and Vehicles, Regulations, 2007 SI 2007-765, TSF, EV. Asterisk Smoke Free Premises, etc., Wales, Regulations 2007 SI 2007 W 787 TSFP, W, R. Asterisk Traffic Management Act 2004 TMA. Traffic Signs Regulations and General Directions 2002 TSRGD Use of Invalid Carriages on Highways Regulations, 1988, UICHR Vehicle Excise and Registration Act 1994, Vera. Zebra, Pelican, and Puffin Pedestrian Crossings Regulations and General Directions 1997 ZPPPCRGD. Asterisk specific legislation applies to smoking in vehicles, which constitute workplaces. For information, visit http colon slash slash www.smokefreeengland.co.uk http colon slash slash www.clearingtheairscotland.com http colon slash slash www.smokingbanwales.co.uk Annex 5. Penalties. Information and rules about penalties, including points and disqualification, a penalty table, new drivers, and other consequences of offending. Penalties and the Highway Code. Parliament sets the maximum penalties for road traffic offenses. The seriousness of the offense is reflected in the maximum penalty. It is for the courts to decide what sentence to impose according to circumstances. The penalty table indicates some of the main offenses and the associated penalties. There is a wide range of other more specific offenses which, for the sake of simplicity, are not shown here. The penalty points and disqualification system is described below. Penalty Points and Disqualification The penalty point system is intended to deter drivers and motorcyclists from following unsafe motoring practices. Certain non-motoring offenses, e.g. failure to rectify vehicle defects, can also attract penalty points. The court must order points to be endorsed on the license according to the fixed number or the range set by Parliament. 
The accumulation of penalty points acts as a warning to drivers and motorcyclists that they risk disqualification if further offenses are committed. Law RTOA Sex 44 and 45 A driver or motorcyclist who accumulates 12 or more penalty points within a three-year period must be disqualified. This will be for a minimum period of six months or longer if the driver or motorcyclist has previously been disqualified. Law RTOA Sect 35 For every offense which carries penalty points the court has a discretionary power to order the license holder to be disqualified. This may be for any period the court thinks fit, but will usually be between a week and a few months. In the case of serious offenses, such as dangerous driving and drink driving, the court must order disqualification. The minimum period is 12 months, but for repeat offenders or where the alcohol level is high, it may be longer. For example, a second drink drive offense in the space of 10 years will result in a minimum of three years disqualification. Law RTOA Sect 34 Penalty Table Offense Maximum Penalty Penalty Points Causing death by dangerous driving. Life imprisonment slash unlimited fine slash obligatory five years minimum. 3 to 11 if exceptionally not disqualified. Dangerous driving two years imprisonment slash unlimited. Fine slash obligatory disqualification. 3 to 11 if exceptionally not disqualified. Causing death by careless driving under the influence of drink or drugs. Life imprisonment slash unlimited fine slash obligatory five years minimum. 3 to 11 if exceptionally not disqualified. Careless and inconsiderate driving. Unlimited fine slash discretionary disqualification. 3 to 9. Driving while unfit through drink or drugs or with excess alcohol or failing to provide a specimen for analysis. Six months imprisonment slash unlimited fine slash obligatory disqualification. 3 to 11 if exceptionally not disqualified. Failing to stop after an accident or failing to report an accident. Six months imprisonment slash unlimited fine slash discretionary disqualification. 5 to 10. Driving while disqualified, 6 months imprisonment, 12 6. Months in Scotland, slash unlimited fine. Slash discretionary disqualification. Driving after refusal or revocation of license on medical grounds. 6 months imprisonment, slash unlimited fine, slash discretionary disqualification. 3 to 6. Driving without insurance unlimited fine slash discretionary. Disqualification. 6 to 8. Using a vehicle in a dangerous condition. LGV or PCV unlimited, other vehicles pound 2, 500 slash obligatory disqualification if offense committed within 3 years of a previous conviction for a similar offense 6 months men otherwise discretionary. 3 in each case. Failure to have proper control of vehicle or full view of the road and traffic ahead. 1,000 pound fine, 2,500 pounds for PCV or 3. Goods vehicle, slash discretionary disqualification. Using a handheld mobile phone when driving. 1,000 pound fine, 2,500 pounds for PCV or 6. Goods vehicle, slash discretionary disqualification. Driving otherwise than in accordance with a license. 1,000 pound fine slash discretionary disqualification. 3 to 6. Speeding 1,000 pound fine, 2,500 pounds for motorway offenses slash discretionary disqualification. 3 to 6 or 3, fixed penalty. Traffic light offenses 1,000 pound fine slash discretionary 3. Disqualification. No MOT certificate 1,000 pound fine. Seat belt offenses 500 pound fine. 
Dangerous Cycling, 2,500 pound fine. Careless Cycling, 1,000 pound fine. Cycling on pavement, 500 pound fine. Failing to identify driver of vehicle. 1,000 pound fine, slash discretionary 6. Disqualification. Asterisk where a court disqualifies a person on conviction for one of these offenses, it must order an extended retest. The courts also have discretion to order a retest for any other offense which carries penalty points, n. Extended retest where disqualification is obligatory, and an ordinary test where disqualification is not obligatory. Furthermore, in some serious cases, the court must, in addition to imposing a fixed period of disqualification, order the offender to be disqualified until they pass a driving test. In other cases, the court has a discretionary power to order such disqualification. The test may be an ordinary length test or an extended test according to the nature of the offense. New Drivers Special rules as set out below apply for a period of two years from the date of passing their first driving test, to drivers and motorcyclists from the UK, EU, slash EEA, the Isle of Man, the Channel Islands, or Gibraltar, who pass their first driving test in any of those countries. Other foreign countries who have to pass a UK driving test to gain a UK license, in which case the UK driving test is treated as their first driving test, and other foreign countries who, without needing a test, exchanged their license for a UK license and subsequently passed a UK driving test to drive another type of vehicle, in which case the UK driving test is treated as their first driving test. For example, a driver who exchanges a foreign license, car, for a UK license, car, and who later passes a test to drive another type of vehicle, e.g. an HGV, will be subject to the special rules. Where a person subject to the special rules accumulates six or more penalty points before the end of the two-year period, including any points acquired before passing the test, their license will be revoked automatically. To regain the license, they must reapply for a provisional license and may drive only as a learner until they pass a further driving test. Also see Annex 8, Safety Code for New. Drivers Law RT, ND, A. Note. This applies even if they pay for offenses by fixed penalty. Drivers in the first group, UK, EU, slash EA, etc., who already have a full license for one type of vehicle are not affected by the special rules if they later pass a test to drive another type of vehicle. Other consequences of offending. Where an offense is punishable by imprisonment, then the vehicle used to commit the offense may be confiscated. Law PCC, S. A., Sect. 143. In addition to the penalties a court may decide to impose, the cost of insurance is likely to rise considerably following conviction for a serious driving offense. This is because insurance companies consider such drivers are more likely to be involved in a collision. Drivers disqualified for drinking and driving twice within 10 years, or once if they are over two and a half times the legal limit, or those who refuse to give a specimen, also have to satisfy the driver and vehicle licensing agency's medical branch that they do not have an alcohol problem and are otherwise fit to drive before their license is returned at the end of their period of disqualification. Persistent Misuse of drugs or alcohol may lead to the withdrawal of a driving license. Vehicle Maintenance, Safety, and Security Vehicle Maintenance Take special care that lights, brakes, steering, exhaust system, seat belts, demisters, wipers, washers, and any audible warning systems are all working. Also, lights, indicators, reflectors, and number plates must be kept clean and clear. Windscreens and windows must be kept clean and free from obstructions to vision. Lights must be properly adjusted to prevent dazzling other road users. Extra attention needs to be paid to this if the vehicle is heavily loaded. Exhaust emissions must not exceed prescribed levels. Ensure your seat, seat belt, head restraint and mirrors are adjusted correctly before you drive. Ensure that items of luggage are securely stowed.
Laws RVLR, 1989 Regs, 23 and 27, and CUR Regs 30 and 61. Warning Displays Make sure that you understand the meaning of all. Warning Displays on the Vehicle Instrument Panel Do not ignore warning signs, they could indicate a dangerous fault developing. When you turn the ignition key, warning lights will be illuminated but will go out when the engine starts, except the handbrake warning light. If they do not, or if they come on while you are driving, stop and investigate the problem, as you could have a serious fault. If the charge warning light comes on while you are driving, it may mean that the battery isn't charging. This should also be checked as soon as possible to avoid loss of power to lights and other electrical systems. Window Tints you must not use a vehicle with excessively dark tinting applied to the windscreen or to the glass in any front window to either side of the driver. Window tinting applied during manufacture complies with the Visual Light Transmittance VLT, standards. There are no VLT limits for rear windscreens or rear passenger windows. Laws RTA 1988, Sect 42, and CUR Reg 32. Tires. Tires must be correctly inflated to the vehicle manufacturer's specification for the load being carried. Always refer to the vehicle's handbook or data. Tires should also be free from certain cuts and other defects. Cars, light vans, and light trailers must have a tread depth of at least 1.6 mm across the central three-quarters of the breadth of the tread and around the entire circumference. Motorcycles, large vehicles and passenger-carrying vehicles must have a tread depth of at least 1 mm across three-quarters of the breadth of the tread and in a continuous band around the entire circumference. Mopeds should have visible tread. Be aware that some vehicle defects can attract penalty points. Tire age. Tires over 10 years old must not be used on the front axles of. Goods vehicles with a maximum gross weight of more than 3.5 tons. Passenger vehicles with more than 8 passenger seats. Additionally, they must not be used on the rear axles of passenger vehicles with 9 to 16 passenger seats, unless equipped with twin wheels. To prove the age of a tire, it is further required that the date of tire manufacture marking must always be legible. Vehicles currently excluded from tire roadworthiness regulations and vehicles of historical interest which are not used for commercial purpose are exempt from these requirements. Law CUR Reg 27 If a tire bursts while you are driving, try to keep control of your vehicle. Grip the steering wheel firmly and allow the vehicle to roll to a stop at the side of the road. If you have a flat tire, stop as soon as it is safe to do so. Only change the tire if you can do so without putting yourself or others at risk, otherwise call a breakdown service. Tire Pressures Check weekly. Do this before your journey, when tires are cold. Warm or hot tires may give a misleading reading. Your brakes and steering will be adversely affected by underinflated or overinflated tires. Excessive or uneven tire wear may be caused by faults in the braking or suspension systems or wheels which are out of alignment. Have these faults corrected as soon as possible. Fluid Levels Check the fluid levels in your vehicle at least weekly. Low brake fluid may result in brake failure and a crash. Make sure you recognize the low fluid warning lights if your vehicle has them fitted. Before Winter Ensure that the battery is well maintained and that there are appropriate anti-freeze agents in your radiator and windscreen bottle. Other problems. If your vehicle pulls to one side when braking, it is most likely to be a brake fault or incorrectly inflated tires. Consult a garage or mechanic immediately. Continues to bounce after pushing down on the front or rear, its shock absorbers are worn. Worn shock absorbers can seriously affect the operation of a vehicle and should be replaced. Smells of anything unusual, such as burning rubber, petrol, or an electrical fault, investigate immediately. Do not risk a fire. Overheated engines or fire. Most engines are water-cooled. If your engine overheats you should wait until it has cooled naturally. 
only then remove the coolant filler cap and add water or other coolant. If your vehicle catches fire, get the occupants out of the vehicle quickly and to a safe place. Do not attempt to extinguish a fire in the engine compartment, as opening the bonnet will make the fire flare. Call the fire brigade. Petrol stations slash fuel tank slash fuel leaks. Ensure that, when filling up your vehicle's tank or any fuel cans you are carrying, you do not spill fuel on the forecourt. Any spilled fuel should be immediately reported to the petrol station attendant. Diesel spillage is dangerous to other road users, particularly motorcyclists, as it will significantly reduce the level of grip between the tires and road surface. Double check for fuel leaks and make sure that you do not overfill your fuel tank. The fuel cap is fastened securely. The seal in the cap is not torn, perished, or missing. There is no visual damage to the cap or the fuel tank emergency fuel caps, if fitted, should form a good seal. Never smoke or use a mobile phone on the forecourt of petrol stations. As these are major fire risks and could cause an explosion. Undertake all aspects of the daily walk-around checks for commercial vehicles, as recommended by DVSA www.gov.uk slash dvss slash commercial dash vehicle dash safety and the fleet operator recognition scheme wwwfirs onlineorguk Vehicle security When you leave your vehicle you should Remove the ignition key and engage the steering lock. Lock the car, even if you only leave it for a few minutes. Close the windows completely. Never leave children or pets in an unventilated car. Take all contents with you, or lock them in the boot. Remember, for all a thief knows a carrier bag may contain valuables. Never leave vehicle documents in the car. For extra security fit an anti-theft device, such as an alarm or a mobilizer. If you are buying a new car, it is a good idea to check the level of built-in security features. Consider having your registration number etched on all your car windows. This is a cheap and effective deterrent to professional thieves. First aid on the road. This highway code applies to England, Scotland, and Wales. The highway code is essential reading for everyone. The following information was compiled with the help of St. John Ambulance, the British Heart Foundation, and the British Red Cross. It's intended as a general guide for those without first aid training but shouldn't be considered a substitute for proper training. Any first aid given at the scene of an incident should be looked on only as a temporary measure until the emergency services arrive. Deal with danger. Further collisions and fire are the main dangers following a crash. Approach any vehicle involved with care. Switch off all engines and, if possible, warn other traffic. Stop anyone from smoking. Get help. Try to get the assistance of bystanders. Get someone to call the appropriate emergency services on 999 or 112 as soon as possible. They will need to know the exact location of the incident and the number of vehicles involved. Try to give information about the condition of any casualties, e.g. if anyone is having difficulty breathing, is bleeding heavily, or does not respond when spoken to. Help those involved. Do not move casualties still in vehicles unless there is the threat of further danger. Do not remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it is essential. Remember the casualty may be suffering from shock. Do not give them anything to eat or drink. Do try to make them warm and as comfortable as you can. Protect them from rain or snow, but avoid unnecessary movement. Dio give reassurance confidently and try not to leave them alone or let them wander into the path of other traffic. Provide emergency care. Remember the letters D R A B C. D danger check that you are not in danger. Our response, try to get a response by asking questions and gently shaking their shoulders. A airway, if the person is not talking and the airway may be blocked, then place one hand under the chin and lift the chin up and forward. If they are still having difficulty with breathing, then gently tilt the head back.
If the casualty is unconscious and breathing, place them in the recovery position until medical help arrives. Be breathing normal breathing should be established. Once the airway is open check breathing for up to 10 seconds. Seek compressions if they have no signs of life and there is no pulse, then chest compressions should be administered. Place two hands in the center of the chest and press down hard and fast, 5 to 6 centimeters at a rate of 100 slash minute. You may only need one hand for a child and shouldn't press down as far. For infants, use two fingers in the middle of the chest when delivering compressions and don't press down too far. Bleeding First, check for anything that may be in the wound, such as glass. Taking care not to press on the object, build up padding on either side of the object. If there's nothing embedded, apply firm pressure. Over the wound to stem the flow of blood. As soon as practical, fasten a pad to the wound with a bandage or length of cloth. Use the cleanest material available. If a limb is bleeding but not broken, raise it above the level of the heart to reduce the flow of blood. Any restriction of blood circulation for more than a short time could cause long-term injuries. Burns Check the casualty for shock, and if possible, try to cool the burn for at least 20 minutes with plenty of clean, cold water, or other. Non-toxic liquid Don't try to remove anything that's sticking to the burn. Be prepared. Always carry a first aid kit, you might never need it, but it could save a life. Learn first aid, you can get first aid training from a qualified organization such as St. John Ambulance and Brigade, St. Andrew's First Aid, British Red Cross Society, or any suitable qualified body. Safety Code for New Drivers This code will help you drive safely in your first year after passing the driving test, when you are most vulnerable. You should always follow the highway code. It's most dangerous driving at night, don't drive between midnight and 6 a.m. unless it's really necessary. Don't let passengers distract you or encourage you to take risks, tell them that you need to concentrate on the road. Never show off or try to compete with other drivers, particularly if they are driving badly. Don't drive if you've drunk any alcohol or taken drugs. Some medicines can affect your ability to drive safely. Always read the warning on the label. Make sure everyone's wearing a seat belt throughout the journey. Keep your speed down, especially on bends. Be very careful driving high-powered or sporty cars, even if you learn to drive in one. You must have insurance, it's an offense to drive without it. You'll lose your license if you get six penalty points within two years of passing your first driving test. You'll need to pass both tests again to get it back. Further reading and conversions. The highway code applies to England, Scotland, and Wales. Check the metric conversions table to convert miles to kilometers and access other useful sources of information about traveling and driving. Metric conversions. Miles kilometers. 1.001.61. 5.9. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 1.0. 